The McNeese State Cowboys feature one of the most dominant defenses in the country. Already this season, the Cowboy D has posted five touchdowns and is the conference leading rush defense. Southwest Texas faces the task of establishing a running game on the nation's sixth ranked defense. The Bobcats will try to apply pressure on a McNeese quarterback making his first start. Bob DeBest looks for a victory in the Bobcats conference opener. The Southland Football League is next on Fox Sports Net. Severe thunderstorms last night have made way to an absolutely gorgeous afternoon for college football. And today, from San Marcos, Texas, Fox Sports Net presents the Southland Football League. It's the 13th ranked McNeese State Cowboys on the road to take on the 17th ranked Bobcats of Southwest Texas State. Hello, everyone. I'm Kevin Eschenfelder alongside Gary Reasons. It is great to welcome you to San Marcos, Texas. And Gary, just another year in the Southland Football League. Things are wide open. McNeese State already coming in here with a loss. Anybody can win this league right now. Well, Stephen F. Austin, I'll tell you, they came in, they played very well against McNeese. They got the win, and the McNeese is back. He's race here in the Southland. I'll tell you, Kevin. Yeah, McNeese, the preseason favorite to win this league. No team has ever talked more about that throughout the telecast. But this is at Southwest Texas State. Drew it up, but they're going to have a couple of fresh quarterbacks under center tonight. We'll start with McNeese State. Well, McNeese has to put a young quarterback out there. Slade Nagel, their senior quarterback last week, threw four interceptions, so they're going with this guy who throws the, bell, throws the ball real well. They think that they that way. For Southwest Texas State, and since then, it's been Cody McCauley's ball club. Well, Cody McCauley has run this team very well. He runs the option real well, a little bit different than what Reagan Joe pleased with his development so far. Too deep. Joe Judge, the leader for McNeese State on the defensive side, ranked team. The, the smell of burgers sizzling on tailgate. Roar of a mighty throng of fans. Mission of gridiron greatness. Where raw recruits make their bids to rise above the deeds of yesterday's heroes. It's here that legends are born and stories unfold of triumphant victories and despairing defeats. This is the Southland Football League, where helmet meets helmet, pad meets pad, and with a lot of sweat and a little luck, a big skin makes it into the promised land. This is no dance contest. This is butt kicking, bulldog, smash mouth football in the finest tradition of the game. There is no better way to spend a Saturday afternoon. Get out, get out there, and live it! NCAA football opens its doors to everyone. The doors are wide open for academics and athletics. It's a chance to demonstrate excellence. To show creativity and innovation both in the classroom and on the field. NCAA football gives... College Footburger, just like you like it. Well, I'm a stockbroker. I love the challenge that the job presents. Family comes first for me. Anytime I can spend with my kids, this is a family restaurant. When I want something different, I go for the Southwest Water Chicken. And my wife sort of turned me on to that. I enjoy it. The chicken is crisp, fresh lettuce, tomatoes, extra zingy sauce. It's very, very, very filling. They love Whataburger. They enjoy spending a little extra time with Dad. Whataburger, just like you like it. Introducing the best damn sports show, period. Comedy. My answer is yes and crush that. <laughs> Commentary. If it wasn't for him, baseball would be in the toilet right now. Updated the show that takes you places no other go. Join Chris Rose, Tom Arnold, and a bunch of opinionated ex-jocks. What more could you want from a sports show? I think Porky Pig would agree. <laughs> the best damn sports show, period. Weeknights at 7.30. What well, being a man is all about? It's not about being tough. It's not about guns. It's not about kicking butt. It's about being a good son. It's about being a good father. It's about taking care of your family. It's about being respected for who you are and not who you can beat up. The Southland Football League brought to you by Delta. Proud to be the official airline of the Southland Football League. Visit Delta at www.deltaair.com. La Quinta ends with 300 locations nationwide. Call 800-531-5900. And by the Southland Football League. Visit the official website of the Southland Football League at www.southland.org. 
just terrible weather last night, but an absolutely gorgeous day today. McNeese State coming in here, ranked 13th in the nation, while Southwest Texas State is ranked 17th. Doesn't get a whole lot better than that, 75 degrees with a 50% humidity. It is a bit windy, gusting up to 25 miles an hour out of the northwest. We pretty much look forward to high skies all afternoon. A couple of coaches coaching at their alma mater. Tommy Tate, who has been around McNeese State football since the mid-70s. Same can be said for Bob DeBess, the head coach at Southwest Texas State. Tommy Tate in his second year, while DeBess is in his fifth season, and he has never coached a team that has beaten McNeese State. We are underway here in San Marcos. McNeese State will get it first. And out to the 20 yard line goes Jermaine Martin, the 5'6 senior. That's exactly where McNeese State will start off. First down and 10 from its own 20 yard line as Scott Pendarvis brings his ball club out onto the field, a 6'3, 220 pound freshman. Pendarvis, you see the numbers as he makes his first career start, 10 of 12. The lineup's brought to you by La Quinta N. The offensive line, there's been a bit of a change on the left side as Krayshawn gets the start at left tackle. And you see the backs and receivers. Ostelet also at the fullback. He will replace Luke Lawton. That's a change as well in a last minute one as, as well as Lawton was the leading scorer on this team, but a flag on the first play of the ball game. Offside. On the defense, five-yard penalty. Repeat. Roger Gaskamp, our referee today. And so a first down and five for the Cowboys of McNeese State. McNeese, three wins, two losses overall. They lost last week to Stephen F. Austin in their conference opener. This the conference opener for four and one Southwest Texas, right up the middle. Not a whole lot there. Maybe a gain of a couple of yards, but keep in mind, Clinton Ballard was there for Southwest Texas. That was on a first down and five, so a second down and short is coming up after the very short gain. Defensively, there's a La Quinta lineup. Justin Dunk, Dursky, Ballard, and Pavlek up front. Myron Coleman and Pitts, that's John Check. He runs the cat. It's more like a strong safety. It's basically a five-man defensive back. Darden Jones, Rogers, and Baker in the defensive backfield on second down. Out to the 29-yard line. It's going to be short of the first down, needing about one for the first. Dershke there to make the stop there, along with Sterling Rogers coming up from that strong safety position. Kevin, what you're seeing starting out here from McNeese State, they run the eye offense. They run two backs in the backfield the majority of the time. They're trying to run and pound the ball. They don't want to make this quarterback have to win the football game for him. Scott Pendervoss getting his first start. They want to move the ball on the ground if they can. Aaron Pierce, the single setback. Davis wants to throw. He will into the flat. And incomplete. A little high and outside for Darren Oslett, who has one reception on the season but couldn't hold on to that one. Donnie Baker had the coverage, the right defensive cornerback, and it's punt time for McNeese. David Lada comes in. Career 41-yard average. He's a very good punter. 42 yards is average. You see 41.7 here in 2001. A little wind here today, Kevin. It's coming from my left to right across the field. Wind is in the punter's face now, but I saw him warming up. Some of these guys are punting 70 and 80 yards today. The Bronson Sanders back deep. Southwest Texas is going to get away from this one. It'll be a short punt. And again, if you were saying that was in to a strong wind, and Southwest Texas is going to get good field position when we come back to San Marcos. It's scoreless. You're watching the Southland Football League on. Between the Silicon Hills of Austin and the service industries of San Antonio, Southwest Texas State University is in a prime spot in San Marcos to tap into the fastest growing high-tech market in the South. From X-ray analysis to semiconductor manufacturing engineering, SWT is taking a leading edge in the technology fields. SWT graduates some of the most trained and qualified professionals on the brink of the high-tech market. Southwest Texas, a university for leading high-tech specialists. 
What are you doing today? Learn to earn at McNeese State University in Lake Charles, Louisiana. McNeese is the university of choice for almost 8,000 students. The university offers more than 80 degrees in business, education, engineering, liberal arts, nursing, and science. And McNeese has been ranked among the best schools in the nation in providing individual attention to its students. For more information about McNeese State University, go online at mcneese.edu. Excellence with a personal touch. It's what you should expect. McNeese is a member of the University of Louisiana system. Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net, presented by Kyocera tonight. Well, it's Cody McCauley's show to run the 6'1", 195-pound redshirt freshman out of West Texas. Those nice numbers coming in. Completed 63% of his passes. And there go no huddle on first down. Bronson Sanders is a single setback. Only a 27-yard punt line facing the number one defense in the Southland Football League. They throw it up top and incomplete. A go route on the outside for Devin Freeman. But Cody McCauley a little high and outside. Let's take a look at your offensive lineups brought to you by La Quinta. All right, after this flag, we'll find out what happens here. Off that. On the defense, five-yard penalty. Where have we seen that down. before? Now we will take a look at the offense for Bob DeBess. Cody McCauley, young man, 63%, three touchdowns, three interceptions. The big guys up front, Rust, Davis, Wilson, Wheeler, and McCoy. Backs and receivers, Bronson Sanders, he's very good. Tyson Olivo to catch a lot of passes. Now they hand it to Bronson Sanders. He's got a big hole, takes it outside, first down and more as he gets down to the 40-yard line. A gain of 12 and an impressive run for Bronson Sanders, a guy that coming off a 130-yard effort a week ago. We'll spread it out here. The offense does, and they're going to run the draw play. Just going to get good blocking on the left side. You see the left guard taking him out, and Bronson finds a whole good opening there for the Bobcats and get a big play. Joe Judge finally knocks him off his feet. The thing they're worried about with Bronson Sanders right now is that he just may be getting too many carries. At five foot seven, 175 pounds, they run the option to the right side. And here's Sanders again, got another and he's inside the 35, down to the 32-yard line. In this offense for Southwest Texas State, the wide receivers have to block, and they did a nice job. But let's take first a look at the defense. The guys up front, Zeno, Evans, McNutt, and Abraham. No defense gets the quarterback better. Archie and Garrison are the linebackers in basically this 4-2-5 set. Smith, Williams, Prince, Judge, and Arthur Goodley. Keep an eye on Joe Judge, the strong safety, along with Hadley Prince. Right now, fake the handoff, and there comes everyone. And I should say, here comes the judge, because <laughs> the judge got to him. Joe Judge with the quarterback sack. Southland Football League Player of the Week a couple of weeks ago for his effort against Texas A in Louisiana. I think there's three or four fakes in here. Watch the quarterback here as he fakes. they got a lot of people working into the field right here at the quarterback position. And the defense, I tell you, here's just Judge just going to come in and just going to clean up on everything. Let everything happen in front of him, but he comes in and takes care of business. Back up third down and 10 from the 40. Oh, Robertson motion, but they run the option of the weak side, and it's going to be well short of a first down, maybe a gain of a couple, as Sean Williams, the cornerback, the senior from Missouri City, Texas, came up to lead the way, and it's punt time now for Southwest Texas as Marvin McCurry comes on to punt it away. Well, this is in the plus side of the territory, Kevin, where might want to do a little fake or something right here. I don't know. It's a kind of a short area to punt in. They could have even tried a field goal. It's fourth down and eight. They got a strong wind at their back. Just hang it up and let the wind do its work as Aaron Pierce gets away from it. Takes a bounce out of bounds. Not bad. Out of bounds at the 12-yard line. So, so far, it's been a field position battle. Southwest Texas winning that, but we're scoreless in San Marcos. Since 1963, some of them have gone on to hold public office or to play professional sports. Some have become heads of major corporations. 
Still others have made the news, while others reported it. Some have gone on to protect our country, while others were destined to entertain. And though they've taken different roads, the universities of the Southland Conference. Places to go to become what you want to be. Called the San Marcos Shuffle. <laughs> it's a Texas natural. Five road, no road, anywhere you gotta go. 35, 46, show you how to get your kicks. A daytime, nighttime, go late, nanny time, train, stop a tiny bop, and all shop a day. You drop a nose down, touchdown, hot campus all around. Gear goes, river, floating glass, bottom, show a boat, stay over, play on the kids, another world, the one, one call does it all. Tell you folks, I'm playing on the phone in the modern spot. Hey, it's a Texas natural. How has NCAA football influenced your life? The skills I learned as a player prepared me to rise to the occasion. Exude confidence. The skills I learned as a player taught me to work hard, reach my goals. The skills I learned as a player prepared me to rise to the occasion, both on and off the field. NCAA football. Pass it on. I turn it over to Bob DeBess's defense now in a scoreless ball game. You want to stay with us for Southland Football League action all season long, starting on Thursday night. This is always a big rivalry game. Stephen F. Boston will be at Huntsville to take on 19th ranked Sam Houston State. That's number 23 against number 19. November 3rd, we come right back here to San Marcos. 20th ranked Northwestern State takes on Southwest Texas. And finally on Saturday, Indiana Grammar taking on Nichols. And if you can't have fun in Thibodeau, Louisiana, you just can't have fun. Hopefully we'll have an entertaining football game. Game. Here's Aaron Pierce trying to run wide, gets away from Myron Pullman. Pitts is right there to knock him down, and he does a lot of that. The Southland Football League's leading tackler gets Aaron Pierce after a gain of a couple. Bob DeBess has on his defense, Kevin, a lot of speed. They run the 4-2-5. They put five defensive backs in there. The entire football game, they roll their front, so they have a lot of fresh people in there. Greg Pitts is an excellent linebacker, doing a good job for the Bobcats. On eight. Pendarvis handled it off. And Aaron Pierce really never got the football. Pavlek was right there to make sure no one went anywhere. And wisely, Aaron Pierce just fell on the football. Just going to be the draw play. He's going to try to hand it off, but he just doesn't get it in there and just doesn't deliver. Good job that time of hopping up on the football. Otherwise, it could have been a big play. And Pierce was the one that had the heads up there. <laughs> So third down and 12, dangerous place to have a third and long. Working against the wind, quarterback drop. Ben Darvis at the 15, out to the 20 yard line. He's gonna be close to a first down, but he's gonna be short by about a yard, but still, that's a solid call with the freshman quarterback in his first start. It really is, just go ahead and spread the field. He's got four wide receivers, move everybody out of the box and just do the quarterback draw. So the wrap around blocking inside and the quarterback steps up inside. It's a safe play. It's not making him force a bad throw to the outside, which could be uh, really detrimental if the defense was to pick it off and run it in for a score. The boat and Sanders go deep in a dual safety. Awaiting the punt of David Lotta. Senior from Leesville, Louisiana. He only had a 27-yard effort on his first punt. Dropped the snap but gets it away. Low liner. Vote from the 45. In McNeese territory. To the 40 and steps out of bounds. Where did he step out? 36-yard line. Great field position again for Southwest Texas State. We take a break. Can the offense take advantage with 9.01 to go in the first quarter? Bill and Navarre and Chevrolet Motor Division have breaking news. Never before in our 20-year history has Chevrolet had an offer like this. 0% financing on every Chevy car for 60 months. Yes, 0% on Impala, Malibu, Cavalier, and Corvette. Save over $5,000 in interest on a $20,000 loan and get a $90 lower monthly payment. Plus 0% financing on every truck, Silverado, Tahoe, S10, all models. 0% interest on all Chevy cars and trucks. It's October 31st. Shop now at Bill and Navarre Chevrolet in Lake Charles or Sulphur. 
Chevrolet and Navarre and Chevrolet Motor Division have breaking news. Never before in their 20-year history has Chevrolet had an offer like this. 0% financing on every Chevy car for 60 months. Yes, 0% on Impala, Malibu, Cavalier, and Corvette. Save over $5,000 in interest on a $20,000 loan and get a $90 lower monthly payment. Plus 0% financing on every truck, Silverado, Tahoe, S10, all models. 0% interest on all Chevy cars and trucks. It's October 31st. Shop now at Billy Navarre Chevrolet in Lake Charles R. Sulphur. There are moments when you must rely on faith. Faith in your team. Faith in your God-given ability. Faith in the human spirit. And faith that your life is in the most capable hands. Faith is a part of everything we do. Through our Christian-based mission and commitment to quality service, we bring you the region's top heart care and faith in medicine. A 15-yard net punt for McNeese State, and that's a big reason why right there, that and a nice return. Well, we got a 25-yard wind, mile-an-hour wind coming across the field from the north to the south, and I'll tell you, when you're punting into it, cut one punter 27 and 33 yards, when he's normally averaging, what, Kevin, 42 yards a punt? You got it. 41 for his career. So it's not just like he's having a, a career year. And now the question, can Southwest Texas State take advantage? Tripped over. Cody McCauley may have tripped over Justin Julius Williams, I should, Wilson, I should say. Now, he's getting the start today because Reagan George has had, well, he blew out the knee or tore the ACL and MCL against Arkansas Monticello in week one. Yeah, here's Reagan with the cap on. I, you know, he's, I talked to him before the game, Kevin. He's on the sidelines, and he's doing everything he can to help Cody McCauley because he knows that he needs it. A little experience factor that Reagan has. The starter coming in this year, he's got a torn ACL. He tried to come back on it to play, but just feels like he's not going to be able to do it this year. They lost two there, second out 12. Here comes the pressure. McCulloch wisely throws it away. Airmailed that one onto the track. And Jerry Evans and Gerald Zeno were a big reason why, and he didn't have a whole lot of time to get rid of it. Kevin, you talked about at the beginning of the show, this McNeese State defense is the best in the conference and one of the best in the country. They look at the pressure that's going to be on the quarterback. He's going to, everybody's going to lock up outside, but the quarterback's going to be under duress. That's what you call kind of a coverage, almost a sack, but one that the quarterback smartly throws it away. Look at everybody. He's on a man. Nobody to throw it to, so he throws it away, and the pressure in the young man's face. 50 Jerry Evans was the first guy to get there. Eight sacks in 2001. He had eight tackles against Stephen F. Austin last week. Both of these teams will get to the quarterback, and here they come again. They throw it over the middle, complete. Olivo down to the 25-yard line, and a first down for Southwest Texas. Arthur Goodley saved the touchdown and finally wrestled the senior from Grapevine, Texas down. Well, Olivo is their go-to guy, number four here for the Bobcats. He does a nice job working in across the field. It's a little read-out route. Quarterback hits him on his upfield shoulder, doing a good job there. And Olivo takes it for a big first down. Pretty good production this year for Olivo. One of the best receivers in the, con in the conference and one of the toughest guys at the receiver. Kevin, 22nd catch of the year, had eight receptions against Portland State a week ago. Cody McCauley surveying the scene, will run the option to the right side. A lot of white jerseys out there, maybe we'll go ahead for a gain of two yards. Jim Abram really read that nicely. The junior from Slidell, Louisiana, 6'2", 240 on that defensive end spot. Kevin, we talked about the speed on McNeese, excuse me, on Southwest Texas defense. Well, McNeese is very fast as well. They also run a 4-2-5. They put five defensive backs in the game, and these linebackers can run to the ball, and it's a good job of stringing it out. A second down and eight after the gain of two yards. 22-yard line, side the 15. <laughs> Cody McCauley went down. I think Donnie Pitts was the guy that got to him. Problem is, there's a lot of people coming a little too early. Kind of dancing across the line of scrimmage and trying to get back, but uh, just couldn't get back. Hadley Prince is yeah, he was. Safety. He was coming on the safety blitz. Yeah. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. You could have penalized them five yards per player. You could have had about a 20-yard penalty there. Well, Hadley's just trying to get in there a little bit early there, and he tries to dance back but just can't get it. <laughs> they caught him, but the quarterback pays the price too. A second down and three now from the 18-yard line. 
Duncan doing there? That was Lee Davis, his first carry of the game. Well, that was stuffed from the middle to the beginning. Jim Abram, first guy there. Good job of stepping up on the inside counter play. Abram steps in and makes a nice tackle at the line of scrimmage. He gets underneath the guard's block, who's pulling around and just kind of popping him. With a little grunt as he takes him down. From Abram, a nice game early on for Tommy Tate's defense. Now they go from the eye set. Fake the handoff to Davis, wide open. McCauley, 10. Down at the four yard line. Cody McCauley, a first down and first and goal coming for Southwest Texas. Arthur Goodley saved the TD. Well, this is a play where the tight end is going to get out in the route. It's kind of a bootleg, and McCauley comes around the corner. Both the defenders go with the tight end, so McCauley says, hey, nobody's here. I'm going to run it straight up the field. You'll see him. He's going to try to get a blocker out here in front of him, but nobody's in there. He sees a lot of green grass, but watch his quarterback run. He's not trying to duck it, get out of bounds, or slide. He's trying to take it to the house. Good, strong quarterback. I think that time... Southwest Texas taking a bit of advantage of an over-aggressive McNeese defense. They go to Davis, and Davis with the tough sledding down to the three-yard line. Tell you what, McNeese State will hit you in the mouth, won't they? They will. That defense is tough. They step up and they hit. And, but the good news for Southwest Texas is Lee Davis coming back and playing for these guys. He's had a, a lower back problem. He's had some spasms, and they didn't know if he'd whether, whether he'd be able to play or not today. He did practice all week, but he has some continuing pain in his, in his lower back. And... Uh, just, he's just a good one-two punch with Bronson Sanders. Bronson Sanders comes back into the game, and he will do the single setback. Two wide receivers set. Quick throw, almost picked off, but incomplete. Well, the coverage was there for Sean Williams. Williams had the inside track, never let, let Bo Robertson get position. I think Sean was baiting him. He baited him. He gave him the inside, but he says, no, I can close this. The quarterback throws it inside. It's going to be across the field here. You'll see it. But he just gets it right in there, and good job that time by Sean Williams stepping in front and almost making a big play. Bob and Bess's ball club facing a third down in goal, trying to score on this defense that has been very stingy all season long. From the four. Option. Sanders trying to find the corner. Didn't quite get there. Did a nice job of getting around 24. Keith Smith, but got knocked out of bounds at the goal line. And now it's decision time for Southwest Texas. And it would appear the decision has already been made. Well, you want to get points here, but I tell you, this defense, they just run to the football. You see Smith, who's going to be on the cornerback spot. Watch what Bronson Dave, uh, excuse me, Bronson Sanders does getting around him, just taking him around. But then you've got Goodley coming from the outside. And watch his speed close into the football at the sideline. Otherwise, it's a score for the Bobcats. That's a pretty tough spot. Ball back at the one yard line. Looked like he got inside, almost got to the pylon. Now, tough angle. 19 yard attempt. Justin Martinez is true. So the Bobcats strike first. Short punt, a good return, and a nice drive leads to a short field goal for Justin Martinez and a three-point lead. Southwest Texas on top of McNeese State. Kevin, I think we're going to have a lot of field position game here today because of the wind. It is a factor. Bob DeBess and the Southwest Texas Bobcats are taking advantage of it early, moving the ball effectively on the punt return, as you mentioned. And then, hey, playing control offense, moving the ball down there. Don't try to get it all at once. They, never, they didn't do that, trying to get the big play. Just go ahead and settle for the field goal. I think that's a big a big positive here for them early in this ballgame. And he never wavered. It was not a matter of calling a timeout, thinking it over. I mean, as soon as, as, soon as he didn't get in, the, the field goal unit went out there. Well, Bob DeBess, is, in his coaching career, has never defeated the McNeese State Cowboys. And, you know, there's some talk about that in the locker room. I know I talked to Reagan George today, and, and he told me, he says, you know, I've been here for five years, and we have not beaten McNeese. And that's one of the things that these players are very aware of here in Southwest Texas. So to get ahead of them early in the ballgame allows them to play with confidence. They got thumped last Last year at Lake Charles, Louisiana. Trying to make amends this year. BJ Sams and Jermaine Martin are back deep. They await the kick. Marvin McCurry, freshman, punts and handles the kickoff duties. Well, he was a 
step away from breaking that big, gets out to the 25-yard line. Uh, Justin Vogt, who's had a nice game on special teams, made the stop. He had the big return to set up the scoring drive. Well, I'll tell you, Martin, he's got a number two out there, but he might have an S on his chest. He's kind of a Superman out there. They call him the Flea. He's only 5'7". They say in the program about a buck 70, but he's probably more like a buck 55. Wide receiver. They want to get the ball in his hands a lot today. Well, Jacob Prim has checked in at the running back spot. I pinned Darvis, and they hand it off to him. But not a whole lot there. Hey, what? Greg Pitts could fill a hole. The middle linebacker lets the big guys up front do all the work, and he steps right in there and takes on a running back. When I talked to Mike Hudson, he told me of McNeese State, we're going to bring as many as we need to to the dance inside to stop that running game. It's a power attack. They run the eye lead plays inside a lot. And they'll do that all day long if they can. So far, they've been very effective. There's a couple of punts already. Prim stays in. Pendarvis looks like he's checking off of the line of scrimmage. That's high and outside for Britt Broadhead. Wide out, ran a little up and out pattern. And third down is coming up for McNeese. Donnie Baker had the coverage. That's what you'll see with McNeese. They run the ball, run the ball, little play action pass. Try to get someone biting in on the run so they can get some separation with the receivers. The toss to the outside, but a little high for him and have a chance to pull it down. It's a game of field position and a game of field position dominated by Southwest Texas so far. Albeit early on, 4.03 to play in the first quarter. Jarvis from the gun. Roll the pocket left. Here comes Clinton Ballard. They had nine quarterback sacks and a fumble recovery. Nine tackles, I should say, and a quarterback sack to go along with that fumble recovery last week against Portland State. And you can put one more in the sack column with a big senior from San Antonio Taft High School. Well, you said the word big. He is. Look at the size of this young man and the ability that he has in the movement. Get that big guy moving around, and he can wreak havoc on a quarterback or in the backfield. Good job of the job of splitting him and making the big sack. Our busiest man on the far right of your screen. David Lotta will punt it away for the play from Texas is going to have an offensive possession that will start, make it the 49. Well, that's more of the win situation that we're talking about. These, this punter is capable now, 42, 43 yards punting the football, but really can't punt it into the wind better than 25 or 30 yards, Kevin. Now, taking a little advantage of this because we've dominated as far as the field position is concerned because the wind is going to change, or at least you're going to have to be going the other direction in about three minutes. So right now, you want to take advantage. Look at that. McNeese State dominating, holding McNeese they're holding McNeese State, I should say, Southwest Texas is, to only six yards total. Option. Bronson Sanders trying to outrun the D. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that is all. Brad Archie did a nice job getting to the outside, the outside linebacker. He runs well for a guy 6'1", 230. Well, Bronson Sanders is about a 4-5, maybe sub 4-5 with his speed, but Brad Archie from his middle linebacker spot, watch him run to the football. He's tracking him inside out. Look at the angle that he takes. That's excellent. That's what linebackers like to do, play downhill. Brad Archie with his speed and gets to the corner. Nice job there making the play. Second down and nine, no gain on the play. Southwest Texas likes to do just what you see. Spread it out. Four receivers. Throw it over the middle. That incomplete. The flag comes in. Uh, you're going to get a, a contact to the head. You, know, you're, you can't lead into the head or trying to defense trying to make the play. I don't know who they're going to call that on, but there was contact up around the head. That's probably going to be a personal foul penalty, Kevin. Brad Archie and the guy you're looking at, a shield Fairchild. We're both there. Well, you see it a lot in the National Football League these days. They're trying to protect the receivers, and they're very cognizant of that, and they're trying to bring that same kind of protectiveness into the college ranks as well. I think call pass interference. I was, I was with you. I didn't think there was contact before. I thought it was the contact of the head afterwards. Well, they really don't have a, a call like that in the collegiate ranks. Oh, that's right. That's good. So they don't have it. Good so defensive pass that's... interference. The spot foul, less than 15 yard, automatic first down. It's almost a compensatory foul is the way I would call it. It's some way to make it up, so that's the that's the call that they have. It's just collision. Tommy Tate doesn't agree with it whatsoever. He thinks it's just a pretty clean hit. They make it first down and 10 as they'll spot the ball at the 44-yard line. Cody McCauley 
thrown it a few times today. Seems like he's looking at Olivo every time he throws it. Why not? Get four wide receivers. We'll spread things out. Bronson Sanders is set back. They'll stop the throw. Almost picked off. Hey, what? Keep picking on Sean White long enough. He's going to get a step. He's going to take that one back the other way. Almost did right there. Well, Williams does a nice job again of stepping in and knocking the ball away. Quarterback's going to set. Time in one, two, three. Lay it outside. There's a timing route. Good job by Williams breaking on the football and making the play. Second down and 10. Young man from the Houston area. And the player down. Ryan Garrison, sophomore from Franklin, Louisiana, being tended to. That's not a good sign, obviously. We're working on a knee like that. Yeah, Ryan, quarterback sacks in the season. Looking at his right leg and a little tender getting up, and hopefully they'll take him to the sideline and things will be in good shape. Pretty good honor in week two, Southland Conference uh, Football League Defensive Player of the Week. Tommy Tate's not going to be pleased about losing his middle linebacker. Well, the thing you look for is how a guy goes off the field, and that's not the way you want to see one, is putting no weight whatsoever on that right leg. It's the second down and 10, just a few ticks under three minutes to go in the first quarter. Southwest Texas leading at 3 0 is taking a bit of an advantage, having a, a 20 mile an hour breeze at their back the entire first quarter of this ball game. Here they come again. Went back to the line of scrimmage, and that is all. Tyree Broden. But McNeese State throws so many people at you. Tim Kennebrew, both of those guys are listed as backups, but they were both right there in Cody McCauley's kitchen, forcing him to force the action, and now he got a third down coming up. There's no mistake, the McNeese State Cowboys are the number one defense in this conference, and good reason for that is we've got a good scheme. They play it very well. They've got a lot of speed, a lot of talent on the field. So, Mr. McCauley, you're going to be pressured all day long, young man, so you're going to have to find a way to answer it. Third down, 10. Straight drop to throw again. He does, and incomplete. Again, testing the corners. This time they go the other way. Keith Smith, and Keith Smith passes the test and knocks down the pass at the same time. So McNeese will get it back. Yeah, what they did was they tried to hold in nine people, eight blockers in there, the quarterback to throw it. Just a two-man route, so makes a limited choices for the quarterback, and he's trying to throw underneath and a good break on the ball by the McNeese State Cowboys. Harvey McCurry will punt for the second time, a freshman from Lubbock, Monterey. Boomer angling for the sideline and does a nice job. Well, had one out of bounds at the 12 a moment ago, and this one out of bounds at the eight yard line. So McNeese State getting used to this part of the uh, football field as they spent most of the day in the shadow of their own goalpost. Well, coming up tonight at six, number three, Oklahoma. The Sooners facing Kansas. Then at 9.15, Arizona travels to Oregon State in a Pac-10 showdown. College football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. Well, Tommy Tate's been backed up here all three series that they've had on offense for the Cowboys. And they need to find a way to drive themselves out of there. A minute and 45 left, left in the first quarter. They don't have the win with them. Lead option and not a whole lot there. Clinton Ballard, like a rodeo bulldogger there as he took down Penn Darvis after a gain of a couple. The wind is such a factor here, Kevin. I would not I would expect that Southwest Texas may even call a timeout here if the clock continues to run when they're good getting point. a third or fourth down situation. Interesting to see here, too, how Pendarvis works the clock. Takes a snap. It's seven on the play clock. Roll the option to the near side. Byron Coleman got there first. Is the football loose? They say it's down. But Pendarvis took a shot. Josh down, and Coleman came in and finished him off. A little bootleg pass here for the quarterback coming around, but I tell you, there's take a look at McNeil. They're trying to bring him all the way across the field to get him the ball. They want to work with him. You'll see him in front there, but watch behind him stuffed. Bingo. Bam. 
Coleman kind of held him up. And Tubbs really laid the letter. Set up the screen. Marcus Trahan, Trahan. Across the 15 They're going to call a timeout here, Kevin. The 17. Yeah. They're going to force him to punt with the win. With into the win. And a wise call by Bob DeBess. First time out they've taken here in the first. Well, this is a confidence pass. The quarterback hasn't had success of trying to get the ball to anybody, so they're going to throw the screen pass out here, get the big guys out in front, and let them work with them. Just a little shorter. You see the blocking out front. They should make contact, but nobody does, and so the defense just kind of comes through. You got when you're running out there, the big offensive lineman, you got to hit somebody, fellas. You can't just run out there and just kill grass. A top two ranked defenses in the Southland Football League, which you see here in McNeese State, number one, Southwest Texas, number two, and I think they're very similar as far as today is concerned because depending on what they're doing coaching-wise, neither quarterback looks like not only have they not had much time, but they hadn't had, had really had anybody open either. No, the defenses have played very well, and the pressure that the defensive line and linebackers rushing the quarterback have put on them caused them not to be able to throw things on timing. But that's just one of the things that happens in this league and in this conference. You're going to have superlative play on the defensive side of the ball, and the offenses have to step up. Matt Vader talking it over. His quarterback, Scott Pendarvis. David Lotta hunting for the fourth time in this first quarter. It's not been a first quarter to remember from him. It's another high boot, all you can do with it. It's a pretty good effort, all things considered, but goes out of bounds on the far side. Be a matter of where they mark it. Still walking. Wow. Southwest Texas, their third straight possession that will start in McNeese State Territory. You're right, Kevin. That was a pretty good punt. He went to angle to the right to the near sideline to the Cowboys sideline and punted out of bounds so they wouldn't have a return on it. But still, the Bobcats have it in the plus territory at the 48-yard line. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to throw one up here with six seconds to go. I was curious to ask you that because it's not really what they do, but do you change that in a situation like this? I just try to throw it in the post area, something in there to make a play, but run it as well. Bronson Sanders instead will run it on the draw and pick up about three yards out near the 46-yard line. Beautiful day for football at Bobcat Stadium here in San Marcos, Texas. One quarter of football is in the books. It's been all Southwest Texas on the field, but so far they lead it just by one, just by three, I should say. We're back with more in a moment. It's the cool, crisp feel of an autumn afternoon. The smell of burgers sizzling on tailgates. The brassy sounds of a marching band. And the roar of a mighty throng of fans. This is football in the Southland. A grand tradition of gridiron greatness. Where raw recruits make their bids to rise above the deeds of yesterday's heroes. It's here that legends are born and stories unfold. Of triumphant victories and despairing defeats. This is the Southland Football League, where helmet meets helmet, pad meets pad, and with a lot of sweat and a little luck, a pigskin makes it into the promised land. This is no dance contest. This is butt-kicking, bulldog, smash-mouth football in the finest tradition of the game. There is no better way to spend a Saturday afternoon. It's Southland Football for crying out loud. Now get up, get out there, and live it! Since 1963, some of them have gone on to hold public office or to play professional sports. Some have become heads of major corporations. Still others have made the news, while others reported it. Some have gone on to protect our country, while others were destined to entertain. And though they've taken different roads, they all got their start in the same place. The universities of the Southland Conference. Places to go to become what you want to be. I spent a lot of time out here thinking, thinking about a big, juicy Texas steak. And I'm sure not going to have it in the outback. Saltgrass is this Texan's kind of steakhouse. Saltgrass serves only certified Angus beef. Char grilled over an open flame out front, rather than fried on a griddle out back. Saltgrass gets my boat every time. Saltgrass Steakhouse, Texas to the bone. Yeah. 
Ready to go here in the second quarter. Southwest Texas leading with Nice State 3 0. And they get a dose of their own medicine as they will be working into about a 20 mile an hour win, facing a third down. And seven to go for the first. Cody McCauley from the shotgun. Here comes everybody again. McCauley trying to find a hole and just will not do it because Hadley Prince, the strong safety, that gives you an idea of just how aggressive this McNeese State defense is when you got strong safeties making tackles at the line of scrimmage. Well, they play so close at the line of scrimmage, too. They box it in there. They work, those two safeties come up there and make a lot of plays, and Hadley Prince does a nice job for that, for that defense for the Cowboys. Now Marvin McCurry will have to punt into this win. Be a lot better field position when the footer gets low liner off and gets a nice roll. All things considered, that's outstanding as the ball rolls out of bounds at the 16 yard line. Kevin, when you take a look at it here, the, the decision that Bob DeBest made to call a timeout is going to net probably about 40 yards in field position or just because of the wind situation. Tommy Tate is going to send his Cowboys back out there around the 16 yard line. And offense hasn't, ended up being able to, hasn't been able to get anything on track. The Southwest Texas defense has played pretty well. So he's going to have to go back into his bag of tricks and find something for his young quarterback to go to do with out there. Look at that. Average field position. Texas, Southwest Texas' average field position has been at the McNeese State 48. Firstly, McNeese State, they're starting at about their average. The 16 yard line. They fumble the football on first down. I think Pendarva's gun back on top of it. Well, that's a break for McNeese. Myron Coleman was right there and almost got to the football. One thing a quarterback has to be aware of is ball security. Watch him here. He doesn't get the ball. He just takes a step before he has control of it. Lucky to get that one back because when those guys are pulling in front of him, the guards and tackles on the counter play, that ball could get kicked around. Luckily, he was able to fall on it. That's center. Chuck Gordon, a senior out of Calhoun, Louisiana. Pretty much the anchor of that offensive line. Boy, nothing there. Absolutely nothing there. Jante McGowan was the first guy in the maroon jersey to get there. Man, it just, just looked like... Uh, like the maroon jerseys were the ones that were supposed to be in the offensive backfield. Well, what you do is you just lock up outside your two corners on your wide receivers. Hey, we're going to take these guys out of the game plan. Everybody else crowd the line of scrimmage. That's what the Bobcats do. And a little blitz inside, a little run blitz, and do a good job of making a play. Well, they need stay, got the win, but they've done nothing but go backwards since then. And now it's a third down and 14. And Darvis. He'll throw this one almost intercepted. Brandon Dickinson, the sophomore out of Round Rock in the Austin area, almost picked that one off. And now, well, McNeese is going to have to punt from its own end zone. And I was watching the free safety the entire play, and it was a three deep zone coverage. And he's in the middle of the field. He's actually right back here watching everything happen. He's going to see the ball thrown right there. And if he makes a good break on the football, it'd be an interception. <laughs> So David Lotta will punt for the fifth time. This time he'll have the win. Gets off a good punt. Out to midfield, and that is about it. Bronson Sanders paid the price for that return. A short one it was, but Southwest Texas still with very good field position. We're going to take a break in San Marcos. Bobcats leading it 3 0. Just an original work boots. From the barnyard to the backyard. From snow and sleet to busy streets. From the factory floor to the dance floor. No other boot works harder to keep you comfortable. Just an original work boots. Double comfort work boots that work. Of our Chevrolet Motor Division have breaking news. Never before in our 20 year history has Chevrolet had an offer like this 0% financing on every Chevy car for 60 months. Yes, 0% on Impala, Malibu, Cavalier, and Corvette. Save over $5,000 in interest on a $20,000 loan and get a $90 lower monthly payment. Plus, 0% financing on every truck, Silverado, Tahoe, S10, all models. 0% interest on all Chevy cars and trucks. It's October 31st. Shop now at Billy Devar Chevrolet in Lake Charles or Sulphur. Uh, don't even ask me about convenience, all right? 
I mean, the place I bank's got to be convenient. I just want to know that, that somebody's going to be there to answer any question I've got. Personal service. Personal service. Personal service. You got it? Treating you better. It's what we do best. Cameron State Bank. Personal banking at its best. Southwest Texas leading at 3-0 with 12.46 early on here in the second quarter. Again, great field position as it's football right at midfield. Tough numbers there for well, the quarterback. You're not kidding. Yeah, one of six. Hey, that, both defenses are playing pretty well yeah. against the pass today. No, no doubt about that. Sanders a setback. Big part. It's Lee Davis who's just checked in the game. They but nothing doing, loose football. And it's going to be a get, they call it an incomplete pass, first of all, and I believe you're going to have a face mask penalty. Well, he ragdolled him, that's for darn sure. That quarterback says, hey, Tim Tim take, pick me up and run, throw me down like that. That's a lot of strength over there. Took him down hard, Tim Kennebrew did. Well, Tim, take a look at him here. Quali's going to come around and he's going to get his left hand on his face mask there and just kind of pull him to the ground. Yeah. Oh, boy, that thing almost spun around in his head, that helmet did. Well, you know that football was thinking, too. Hopefully, Ken McCoy's not going to fall on it. They may have to replace it. Wow, that's a vicious tackle. It is. Ken McCoy at 365 pounds. That's the fourth penalty of the game against McNeese State, and that's a big one there. Takes it all the way down to the 35-yard line. The penalty, Southwest Texas, nearly flawless. Only the opening play of the game where they penalized. That was an offsides penalty. Four wide receivers. There's no one to hand it off to. Well, maybe now there is. Coming near side at the 30. 25, and a flag is down. Arthur Goodley made the stop, not before a nice run. It's Lee Davis looking ahead, but let's check the marker, and it's a hole going against Southwest Texas. Well, you're trying to win the corner right there. They're going to have the holding penalty when he grabbed the jersey. That's exactly what happened. Lee Davis comes around from a slot position on the reverse to the tailback. It's a long block you have to hold there on the outside. They may have actually gotten two of them on the play, but good job at time by the Cowboys, at least coming off making the tackle. You got a cowboy down on the field, Kevin. That's Devin Stubblefield, a senior out of Houston, Texas. We've already lost Ryan Garrison. And an injury that did not look good as they were attending to his. Ryan's back right in knee. the game, which is good news. Russ. He's back there playing his middle linebacker spot. You see him Stubblefield being helped off. He's a big one out there, 314 pounder. They they like his size inside at the defensive tackle spot. Well, it's good to see Garrison come back. And Stubblefield putting a lot more weight on his legs than Garrison was when he went off the field. Doesn't matter who McNeese has run out there though. Cody McCauley and company have had trouble moving it. Then again, so is just about everyone else that's ever played against this Mickey State defense. The first down and 20 after the holding penalty. Lee Davis stays in at the setback. Boy, Davis, not a whole lot there. So they fired off and fired off quickly. Ryan Garrison there to make the stop. Boy, they get off the football so fast. A good surge at time by the left side of the defense. A time by the McNeese State Cowboys. Evans and McNutt, the big two defensive tackles in there, doing a good job of pressuring and allowing the linebacker to flow and step up and make a clean hit. McCauley and company will face a second down and 20. No game. But a game dominated by the defenses. Under 12 minutes to go in the first half. Southwest Texas leading at 3 0. Justin Martinez, a 19 yard field goal. All the scoring thus far. 
time they'll throw it. Olive Oil. Couldn't hold on or couldn't quite get to it. Outstanding coverage again. Joe Judge, they ask a lot of these guys to do a lot of things as they basically run five-man defensive backs. So looking at a nickel defense all the time. Well, you're trying to bring across the field here to Olive Oil, trying to get him in the open. But watch the closing speed by Judge, number 37 coming up there. Good job that time. Quarterback McCauley still having trouble finding the open receiver. It's not been an easy task for him. These Cowboy defenses played very well against the pass today. Joe Judge, just going to get a look at him as he had the coverage. Took one back against Texas A&M for a touchdown, 22 yards. And the play clock expires. So if you think third down and 20 is bad, try on third down and 25, because that's what you're going to be looking at here for a freshman quarterback. Well, what I saw before the play, Kevin, was McNeese. They came up in a press coverage on the outside. They're basically going to blitz everyone inside. And they're going to force that quarterback to throw it on time and make a play and make him beat him. Hasn't been able to do that yet today, so they feel like the way to get to this quarterback is pressure him and make him throw it on time. I think both defenses basically with the same philosophy today? Yeah, pretty much so. They both play with speed and aggressiveness. They want to pressure the quarterback, and they want to dictate what they do on the defensive side of the ball and not allow the offense to dictate Davis back there, and they hand it off to Davis. To the 45-yard line, maybe to the 44. They're in forward progress. Brad Archie making the stop. It's punt time for Southwest Texas as Marvin McCurry comes in. Let's check the player down. Man, they have been falling right now for Tommy Tate's ball club. As Davis makes his way off the field. That's Joe Judge. Oh, well, that's not good news for them at all. Joe's uh, the leader out there on that defensive side of the ball, holding his right leg, and very, very unfortunate for them. To be the third player for the Cowboys today, injured in the on the leg, and Joe looks like he's not uh, responding very well. So here's Judge right here. Let's see what happens to him on the play. The receiver's going to come up and block him, but he just kind of stumbles, tries to cut block him. That's actually a good play. His helmet hit him right on the kneecap or just below the kneecap. It's actually illegal, a very good block. Curtis Dominguez with the block, and Joe Judge, senior out of Catholic, Louisiana, says, I don't need any help. I'm headed to the sideline. I think it stunned him more than anything. He probably got a little stinger on the front of that kneecap or just below it on the shin bone. I'd expect to see Joe Judge back in the ball game. Well, McCurry comes in to punt again. Fourth punt of the day. He's averaged 30 yards on his first three. High snap. Curry hauls it in. Nice kick into the wind. Man, oh man. That's the way you do it. Out of bounds at the four yard line. And guess what? McNeese with bad field position again. It's been the story of the day. Bobcats by three. I'm Philip Tarver for Lake Charles Toyota, where we have great products at great prices backed by great people. Our great products include a great lineup of SUVs, from the full-size Sequoia to the popular new Highlander to the rugged 4Runner. Our great prices include full-size Tundra, two-wheel drive V8, four-door automatic, just $22,900, and we have 0% APR available. Our great people include NADA-certified Toyota-trained professionals who can assist you in making the best purchase decision for your wants, needs, and budget. Great products, great prices, and great people at Lake Charles Toyota, Highway 14, south of I. What are you doing today? Learn to earn at McNeese State University in Lake Charles, Louisiana. McNeese is the university of choice for almost 8,000 students. The university offers more than 80 degrees in business, education, engineering, liberal arts, nursing, and science. And McNeese has been ranked among the best schools in the nation in providing individual attention to its students. For more information about McNeese State University, go online at mcneese.edu. Excellence with a personal touch. It's what you should expect. McNeese is a member of the University of Louisiana system. Between the Silicon Hills of Austin and the service industries of San Antonio, Southwest Texas State University is in a prime spot in San Marcos to tap into the fastest growing high-tech market in the South. From X-ray analysis to semiconductor manufacturing engineering, SWT is taking a leading edge in the technology fields. SWT graduates some of the most trained and qualified professionals on the brink of the high-tech market. Southwest Texas, a university for leading high-tech specialists. 
Uh, some folks made it over from Lake Charles, Louisiana, about a five-hour drive. Here to San Marcos, Texas, and been greeted with a gorgeous afternoon for football after a rocky night last night. Well, this has been a possession game, Kevin, and I tell you, the defenses have played well, and it's a field position game. The punting game has gone very well for Southwest Texas when they've had to punt it, and conversely for uh, McNeese, they haven't punted very well, and the Bobcats have just won the field game, the field position game, but they got a big run here for the Cowboys. Look at this. Aaron Pierce in a foot race. Out to the 38-yard line. That's getting some field position in a hurry, a run of 34 yards. And that's exactly what the doctor ordered for McNeese State. Brandon Dickinson saved a touchdown. Well, look at Quinlan and Davis right there opening a the hole that time for the tailback, popping through and just showing the speed that he has. Good job that time by the offense and making a big play for the Cowboys. In the eye set. Movement flags down. Prior to stand. Ball start on the offense. A false start on back it up five yards. That's the first first down of the day for the McNeese offense. And look at the possessions and where they started more importantly than anything. Well, that's amazing. These, these guys, they have not been able to accomplish much over three plays on each of the possessions, starting this time at their own 40-yard line, excuse me, their own four-yard line, and bring it out prior to that play before the penalty up near the 40. The average starting at their own 16 before this drive, it didn't get any better. And there's a whole lot of pressure, and again, McNeese State going backwards. Big Clinton Ballard got there first. He had a whole lot of help. Great pits among others to get to the quarterback, Scott Pendarvis. Well, Tommy Tate told me before the game that Scott Pendarvis is the quarterback he wanted to play. He felt like he'd give them a, a spark. Don't be surprised if we see Slade Nagel, the senior, come back in and play. There's nothing wrong with him physically. He just had a very poor game a week ago when they wanted to change something. But right now, McNeese needs a spark on offense. Well, Myron Coleman got there first. Senior out of San Antonio tapped. After that, it was fight for survival for the McNeese State quarterback. Now they hand it off to Pierce. Pierce bounces outside. Well, he made a lot more out of that. That was a very impressive six-yard run because they had a lot of trouble. He could have very well lost six yards on that. Jason Washington making the stop. A couple of good runs now from Pierce, number 20, the, uh, the tailback, and just showing his speed. We saw it for a 40-yard scamper, and now to the outside. He just finds the opening and gets to the outside of the defense. Now a third down at 12 for McNeese State. Big chunk of that. 99% of it coming on one run. Third and 12. Cowboys working with the win. Throws this one incomplete. Almost picked off. John Check, the junior from San Antonio Churchill, was out there in the coverage, and he had one go through his hands, and now Pendarvis is one of five for just eight yards. Well, this is basically zone coverage, but you've got a linebacker sinking underneath and does a nice job. That's Check, number 19. He's just bracketing him here. He's going working out to his zone and almost makes the interception. It's a good break on the ball. He had safety help over the top and couldn't get the ball into the fleet. He's not easy to find. <laughs> So Vote and Sanders go deep. See the punt. This is a boomer. Sanders from the 19-yard line out to the 26. And now that is where Southwest Texas will start off. B.J. Sams down on the coverage as the Strutters get set to strut their stuff in about nine minutes. Introducing the best damn sports show, period. Come on and feel the love for the guys. Join Chris Rose, Tom Arnold, and a bunch of opinionated ex-jocks. You got that right, brother. As they take you places no other show dares to go. Sports comedy. You are a sexy man. You look very good. Commentary. If it wasn't for him, baseball would be in the toilet right now. Updated scores and highlights. What more could you want from a sports show? I'm a fan, brother. That's more than an athlete. The best damn sports show, period. Weeknights at 7.30 and 11.30 on Fox Sports Night. 
our Chevrolet Motor Division have breaking news. Never before in our 20-year history has Chevrolet had an offer like this. 0% financing on every Chevy car for 60 months. Yes, 0% on Impala, Malibu, Cavalier, and Corvette. Save over $5,000 in interest on a $20,000 loan and get a $90 lower monthly payment. Plus 0% financing on every truck, Silverado, Tahoe, S10, all models. 0% interest on all Chevy cars and trucks. It's October 31st. Shop now at Billy LaRoche Chevrolet in Lake Charles or Sulphur. If you think these guys play rough, think about your vehicle. Summer, spring, winter, fall, your vehicle works hard for you. Bring your car into Don's Car Wash and Quick Lube for the best treatment around. Let the team at Don's service your car inside and out. With an oil change, complete wash and wax, and a 15-point check. To make sure your vehicle is in tip-top shape to handle anything that gets in the way. Don's off Off Car Wash and Quick Lube, the winning team. Watching Fox Sports Net. SWT, three point lead. Southwest Texas leading McNeese State, three nothing. A reminder on Thursday at 6 30 here on Fox Sports Net. We will head to Huntsville, Texas. 23rd ranked Stephen F. Austin Lumberjacks and the Bearcats of Sam Houston State, ranked 19th. It's more Southwood Football League action Thursday night at 6 30 here on Fox Sports Net. But a game dominated by field position and the defenses. McCauley, they roll him out. He finds Tyson Oliver, and he gets it out near a first down. Marked out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Hadley Prince, strong safety, making the stop. That's one of probably the most productive pass that McCauley has thrown today. Well, just taking a lot of advantage of the, of the uh, action by the quarterback. Everything's working away, then he reads back out. As the play rolls here, you'll see what I'm talking about. He works away from the linebacker who turns around. Good job that time by Olivo going to the sideline and a good throw by the quarterback. Only the second completion of the day for Cody McCauley, the redshirt freshman out of West Texas. And a check off the line of scrimmage. Quick drop that was batted down at the line of scrimmage. It was a Shield Fairchild who got a big paw up there, number 25. Sophomore from St. Gabriel, Louisiana. McCauley does check off of the line of scrimmage, as you said, Kevin. And he sees blitz by the Cowboys defense trying to go to a three-step drop and get the ball out on timing. Trying to hold everybody in to hold up to pick up the blitz. Bob DeVess is pleased with this young quarterback. He's, he's, he's learns every time he goes out there. He, you know, he's just a young freshman, a redshirt freshman. He's been around the program a little while. His three starts, they say he's been okay, he's been good, and he's been bad. See what they get from him today. So far, he's been okay. Uh, third down is going to come up here. Is Brad Archie was there to make the stop after a gain of a couple, but it'll be about a third down and eight for Southwest Texas State. When a head coach decides that a quarterback has the tools, he has the ability to play, the one thing that you just don't know is the game experience, whether or not when you put him out there, he's going to be able to make the decisions and put the team in the, in the best position to win and, and make plays for him. And McCauley, as you said, he's been kind of hot and cold and done some good things and some poor things and kind of been kind of middle of the road today. So he's done on the ground. And so many times you will find a coach that in a freshman quarterback, not so much putting his team in a position to win, but rather not putting them in a position to lose. That's what you ask of a guy like that, especially when you've got somebody like Bronson Sanders back there along with Lee Davis. They throw this one and almost picked off in what should have been intercepted by Willie D'Artez. He should have had that one, and believe me, Willie would be the first person to tell you so. Well, Willie slipped over. Nobody, he was not in coverage. He's kind of covering the tight end on this side who stays in and block, and there's Willie. You see him. He's just going to sneak in and almost pick this one off. The quarterback doesn't see him. Good job by the left side. You see the line there? Picking it up. And he had an illegal receiver downfield on this one as well, I believe. Ineligible downfield on the offense. Penalty is refused. Fourth down. Well, it's punt time. And Marvin McCurry. Bob DeBess always teaching. You got to teach a lot when you got a freshman quarterback. Cody McCauley is just that. Well, hits it high and into this win. Goes out of bounds. It's a pretty good effort. You hit one that high, you got a chance of being able to watch it go back over your head because wind is gusting pretty good. It's only a 21-yard punt. And the 
New State's offense been anemic so far at best. Well, they haven't had a chance to take uh, take advantage of the win situation. Now they do. They start first and 10 at their own 39-yard line, Kevin. Maybe let this quarterback drop back and throw the ball a little bit. They, they like to pound it out and run it and use their play-action game, but their Bobcats have done a very good job against that today. Kandara's got away from one, gets it downfield, complete, down at the 45-yard line goes Jermaine Martin, and they can move the sticks as John Check made the stop, but that was all on the quarterback, Scott Pendarvis. He got away from a lot of trouble in the backfield. Well, when he gets popped in the backfield, I think he's going to go down. I think he actually shocks himself that he gets through the tackle here. The defense does a good job of going. It's going to be the boot pass coming back to the backside and going to get pressure in his face here. And you'll see as he comes up, he's going to break away from this tackle, set his feet, get his composure, and find number two, the flea. That's McNeil on the outside who they want to get the ball in his hands today for sure. Aaron Pierce right up the middle, and Ferguson was there to stop him, stop up the hole. Not a whole lot there. Second down, about 10. They just, well, you can move the stick a little bit. Call it second down and nine. See the numbers on Pendarvis. Now they're working like there's no mistakes there. That's the good news. No interceptions so far today for him. And he's got to get his feet wet, get, it, get him a chance to get into a little bit of a rhythm. This Cowboy offense, Kevin, is predicated on running the football first and throwing it second. Sometimes you have to throw it to, to get the running game going. They throw it here. Jason Taylor fighting out there. Bounced off once and finally took it ahead for a gain of a couple of more as Kendall Jones, defensive back, out there to make the stop with the big hit on. Take a listen to this one. Say, Kendall, you have to what? Wrap up. Well, he did finally. He hit him first time. Say, hey, this big guy's not going down. I'm about to grab him and lasso him. That's it in a wide receiver. This is a tight end. Taylor, 6 2, 240. Here comes a blitz, and down goes Ben Darvis. Sterling Rogers on the safety blitz comes up with the sack. Well, the Southwest Texas defense can bring it from everywhere. They're playing what I call zero coverage. There's no free safety help deep. They line everybody up outside and lock up. But you've got two cats, two guys coming from the outside on either side of the ball. The quarterback, if he rolls left, he's got this guy. He rolls back this way. It's going to be a bit of a match there. And they're going to get one of them. He's going to get through most of the time. McNeese State now 0 for 7 on third down conversions. A fourth down and nine as they look to punt it away. Maybe. Low pass from center. Boy, high short kick. David Lott is going to be praying for a roll. He doesn't get it. That's great field position, all things considered, for Southwest Texas after an 11-yard punt with the win. Well, this is a chance where on offense, when you're punting the football with the win behind you, you want to at least give yourself a chance to pin that Bobcat offense back there down in, inside of their own 20-yard line. But uh, the short punt just kind of spun off his foot, Kevin, and just didn't get very far. It, did, it wasn't a good pass from Senator to start with. That's probably the genesis of that play becoming an 11-yard yard punt. From the 31 yard line. Moody McCauley. Been an adventure today for the Southwest Texas quarterback. He has the ball here. Nice job by the center snapping the football. Flags down. Here comes Sanders. Sanders has the first down. You have to worry about an offside spin of the year because he's out to the 45 yard line. A gain of 14 yards. Bronson Sanders got that quick feet, those quick feet, good vision, good ability to find the open hole. As you said, Kevin, they're probably going to not worry about this. Got all sides on the defense. Penalties refused. First down. Another version of the stretch play here. Most people will hand this off, but they'll just turn and pitch it to him here as they do in the offensive line, get out front, just trying to create a seam. You see Wilson coming around, knocking him out. Good job that time, and Bronson Sanders breaking a few tackles. A good game there for the offense. Number 75, Ken McCoy, a freshman, and Julius Wilson also. Well, he's a junior, I should say, the center. They were the two that were really out there making the block. 68 and 75. Right up the middle, another hole there. 
hurtling and out for a gain of six yards again goes Bronson Sanders. And as you see here, McNeese, they're having a little trouble up front, so they roll their defense in front of them. Hey, we're not going to settle for that. They're going to get somebody in that's going to make some plays. The offensive line is just getting a big push. You see the offensive tackle there coming down, doing a job. Is that rush on the right side? Pushing 6'5", 272, doing a good job by the offense. Second down and four after the six yard game. Just keep Sanders in the backfield. And Sanders met in the backfield by Joe Judge. You wondering about the knee? I think it's all right. Yeah, he's not going to get out of that football game unless he absolutely has to. Joe Judge comes up and just makes plays all over the field. Good job that time. He's called the force. He has to force the run, but hey, I'll just turn and get off the block and make the tackle as well. Watch number 37 come here on the outside. He takes care of the block right there and comes back underneath to make a play. Just too much speed for the tackle to pop to, to push him out. Trying to set up the screen here. Instead, they throw it downfield. The way it looked, and that gives you an idea just how good and how active the McNeese State defense is. They were back there so fast, it almost looked like they were setting up the screen. We got a penalty marker down. Not sure what they're going to call out there, but you're right, Kevin, about the screen play. Haven't seen is that a lot what they of... were doing at first? Okay. Yeah, it's a holding penalty against the offense. And interesting what the. Cowboys may want to do here. They're going to try to set the screen up here. You see the offensive lineman, they're going to release to the outside. And look at the Cowboys. They're right on top of it. The, the back was taken away there by the linebacker. Good job of running through the blocks and get there, and the quarterback has to throw it away. A fourth down. And McCurry, who has been outstanding, three punts inside the 15-yard line. He may be the most valuable player of this game so far. Left footer hits another one. Into the win. Good-looking punt. <laughs> you chalk another one up. McNeese State will have it at the 11-yard line. A 36-yard punt into the wind, and forget about the distance. Just look at where it ended. Yeah, that's the net result, 36 yards on the punt because got a fair catch, and the Cowboys take over, backed up again on offense, Kevin. They go first down and 10 from the 11-yard line. Three minutes, 23 seconds to play. It has been an uneventful first half as far as the offense is concerned, but if you like defensive football, you've seen it today. That's for sure. Penalty marker comes in. Jacob Prim on the carry. Junior from Foley, Alabama. And for the most part, this has not been a situation where the offenses have played bad. Conversely, it's been more the defenses look like they're far ahead of the others. That's going to back it back even further, half the distance to the goal. this into their starting field position now on first down again back to back up to their six yard line well he hasn't been able to do anything i mean tommy tate is just he's had to play it not that they don't play it close to the vest anyway but you hadn't had a choice he's had one possession outside of their own 30 yard line today Prim again what pitts met him head on after a gain of a couple big time hit inside I'm not exactly sure who was delivering the blow either because Prim got in a pretty good shot as well. Kevin here under three minutes. I would expect that Bob DeBess may start using his timeouts again. Remember, he called one early in the game to win some field position with that timeout. It was a timely call. They stopped the Cowboys here, forced them to punt, backed up, possibly get the, the ball back with good field position and get another score. McNeese's average drive today has started at its own 18-yard line. And Davis wants to throw. Goes up top complete. Out 
to the 29-yard line, Jermaine Martin, 5'6", 175. That's why they call him the flea. Donnie Baker knocked him out of bounds, but a big gainer, and that's what McNeese State needed. You've got to give him a lot of room, a lot of speed Martin has, and a lot of quickness. Good job that time by the quarterback. That's probably his best throw of the day, and obviously the best, the best gain of the day for him. You take a look at Martin's numbers on the season. Pretty active receiver for that McNeese bunch. You know, Pindarvis looked like he threw that with more conviction than he has a lot of his passes throughout the afternoon today. He threw it with more confidence, stepped up and really brought it. And he's got a gun. This was complete in the flat. Marcus Trahan, and Trahan out near the 45-yard line. Mark him down at the 44, another McNeese State first down. Now it may be, may be McNeese that may be trying to work the clock right now. Jason Washington made the stop. Good job on the screenplay. Watch the offensive first tackle down. number 51 here. That's Jason Davis. Watch him lock up here on number eight, the up cornerback. Just get, in, get involved with him there. Just get some leather on him and do a good job and just shield him away and then let the running back pick the hole and go with the screenplay. That's a lot of running for those offensive linemen now. That is a lot of running, but sometimes they have to do the extraordinary thing, Jim. 6 1 3 19. <laughs> Loose football. Then <laughs> Darvis got back on it. It's the second time, at least the second time, he's put it on the ground today and been able to recover his own. Well, but the, you know, when you do a play, when you have a play that happens like that, it's such a momentum stopper. Well, it is. Their offense is clicking pretty good. They're just trying to fake the handoff. He just doesn't doesn't pull it out of the, the tailback's rib cage and doesn't come away cleanly. And luckily, be able, was able to fall back on top of it. Well, second down and 10. This is good coverage downfield. He'll run. He's got a lot of room if he can get to the outside. 45-40 and run out of bounds by Greg Pitts. But another first down for McNeese. Plenty of time left. 65 seconds to go here in the first half. One thing about him, when he pulled it down, he decided to run. You're going to see him tuck the ball away. Everything's going to collapse on him, but he finds an opening to the outside. Going to snap the ball and just going to have to look downfield. Everyone's covered, but the quarterback says, hey, I'm going to find myself a seam. And you see the natural valley that he gets there. And he runs there and watch him tuck the football. He tucks it right away. He knows he's going to get it. Has some green grass in front of him and a pretty good game. Throw up top, wide open and overthrowing Jermaine Martin. What tell you what, Martin. Left a defensive back, Donnie Baker, in his tracks. Well, he turned him around. That's what happened. Martin has that quickness. you got to respect his speed and quickness. And Martin just turned Baker around, as you said, Kevin, and got behind him. If the ball had been, been a little touch pass, it would have been able to get there. Take a look at him here as he goes back. And Baker gives him some cushion, but this guy's quick. you got to respect that out move. And he goes Ooh. and bites, and uh, goodbye. <laughs> Donnie may have to go replace his cleats after that. You'll see that again today. Take a, Mark my words on it. They're going to come back to that again because those coaches – they remember those things. They throw this one complete. This could go big. B.J. Sams, touchdown, McNeese. His first catch of the afternoon, and he made it a big one. Kevin, just a quick slant on the play. The quarterback delivers it. He takes a pop back there. Take a look at the heat the quarterback takes. It's just a slant inside. He's going to get him. Watch 54 Coleman, the linebacker, come across and miss the tackle right there. He just flags him, and that allows him to get right up the middle of the field. It's man coverage. There's no safety help. It's a big play for the Cowboys. Well, he averages 20 yards every time he catches the football. That one goes for 38 and a touchdown. And now for the point after and a chance to make it a 7-3 game. It is perfect, and that is the situation with 50 seconds to play in the first half. And Scott Pendarvis, he delivered a strike, and he paid the price. Well, sometimes the quarterbacks have to stand in there and take a little of that action, Kevin. And he does. He certainly does here as he gets one delivered right on his rib cage. He'll take that a nice trade off every time. Jason Washington there to deliver the blow, but nobody can catch B.J. Sams. He takes it in from 38 yards out. 
It's his fourth touchdown of the season, and just like that, in the first half that well, has been seen as dominated by the defenses, all of a sudden one play can change that a ton, and that's exactly what happened. What's Where did McNeese start that drive at, in essence, with the penalty? Basically, their six-yard yeah, line. Five yards, yeah, right there. They were at the 11, had the, had the, uh, the penalty on the, on the false start. Go back to the, the six and drove with the length of the field. Officially, it'll be an 89-yard drive. An impressive one at that, one they needed. And what a time to get it. Charlie Abair kicked this one away. the back of the end zone so 50 seconds to play and Hebert did his job and started from the 20-yard line seven plays 89 yards B.J. Sams from 38 yards out his fourth touchdown catch of the season and for the far right hand column the big one there as they take two minutes and 32 seconds to do it and score with 50 seconds remaining in the first half oh but coaches they tell you that when they tell you there's a lot of one play that might make a game you never know what that play might be and Tommy Tate Real happy about his offensive performance. You take the one play, the quick slant, and turn it up and make a big play for your offense and get a lot of momentum going your way again. And this one off. Bronson Sanders up the middle out to the 25-yard line. The clock will continue to run for a gain of five yards. And Brad Archie makes the stop. The clock stops. And Take a look at Tommy Tate, the McNeese State alum, head coach of his alma mater. And boy, I tell you what, that last drive made him a happy man. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to protect out there. That's what I want to protect. Hey, that's what I want to protect. I know we can run the ball on them. Got to have that conviction. <laughs> Tommy Tate certainly does. He's been that McNeese State program a long time, Kevin. When I played at Northwestern State, he was he was in his first year of coaching at McNeese in 1979, and hey, he was over there and been there been there forever. I mean, he's a, the longest standing coach I think in history. <laughs> it seems like most coaches are you know kind of on the on the circuit. They move around. Coaches move around quite a bit. But Tommy Tate been very fortunate, and now in his second year as a head coach for the McNeese Cowboys, really really loves his job there. And yeah, doing a good job at that. Steve comes in here three and two. Upset last week at home. Obviously a disappointing loss to Stephen F. Austin. As they had three interceptions run back for touchdowns in that one. Actually led the game 14-3 at halftime. But SFA taking advantage of a very strange game in Lake Charles. Taking advantage of three miscues. All right, a host of big knees quarterbacks, Slade Nagel, most notably. That's Sanders up the middle, and Sanders well, was a step away from breaking that one big. He's out to the 32-yard line again. Brad Archie gets to meet Brandon Se Bronson Sanders. So with 33 seconds remaining, it's a first down. Knees State leading at seven to three. A 38-yard touchdown pass. Southwest Texas deciding to uh, play it close to the vest here and not be in a big hurry to run their offensive plays in the line of scrimmage. Paul, you'll see him run the play clock all the way down before he snaps the ball. You know, if I'm Bronson Sanders right now, I'm thinking, Coach, I may need a little bit of a break here on this last drive. We're running out the clock. I gotta be good to go here in the second half. He's only five foot seven, 175 pounds, and he's taking some shots at the end of this first half. Well, Southwest Texas delivered most of the shots in the first half, but Tommy Tate's ball club delivers the biggest one. They score from 38 yards out with 50 seconds remaining in the first half, and the Cowboys of McNeese State lead Southwest Texas at halftime, seven to three. Justin Original Work Boots. From the barnyard to the backyard. From snow and sleet to busy streets. From the factory floor to the dance floor. No 
other boot works harder to keep you comfortable. Just an original work boots. Double comfort work boots that work. Every day, nearly 1,500,000 police officers and firefighters proudly don their uniforms and place their lives on the line to protect our communities. Sadly, we often forget the sacrifices made by these real American heroes. For those dedicated, hardworking men and women who know that no emergency is minor to the victims, the American Historic Society proudly presents the American Heroes Commemorative Silver Dollar, an official United States 2001 Silver Dollar with one troy ounce of pure silver beautifully transformed by the American Historic Society into a lasting memorial. This magnificent legal tender coin features original artwork of two American heroes, a police officer and firefighter on the front, and Old Glory, our country's flag on the reverse, all in vibrant color. But just as important as the tribute this coin makes to the dedicated men and women that help make our nation a safe place to live is what it gives back to them. The American Historic Society proudly donates $5 per order for the benefit of these American heroes. You can now collect this stunning silver dollar for yourself and as a gift for others and know that each beautiful American Eagle silver dollar purchased will give back to those who serve us. A genuine American silver dollar in pure silver beautifully colorized by the American Historic Society. Yours for only $39.95. Order right now and get a free gift. A commemorative lapel pin with a stunning coin, the New York State Quarter featuring our symbol of freedom, the Statue of Liberty, also in vibrant color. It's yours free just for ordering. Supplies of the American Hero Silver Dollar are limited, so call to order your American Hero Silver Dollar and free New York State Quarter pin right now. To order your commemorative American Heroes coin, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-390-6226 or leg with the New York State Quarter absolutely free. Have your credit card ready and call now. Uh, McNeese State Cowboys leading it 7-3 here at halftime. That's what's happening on the football side of things. For everything else going on in the Southland Conference, check this out. Eleven universities will gather at Stephen F. Austin State University on October 29th to contend for the Southland Conference Cross Country Championships. The 38th running of the Southland Men's Meet will take place at 9.30 in the morning at the Piney Woods Country Club in Nacogdoches. The race will cover an 8,000 meter course. McNeese State University returns to defend its title and looks for its third championship in the last four years. In the women's competition, the University of Texas at Arlington captured last year's team title and looked for their third win in the last five years. The 17th annual Women's Southland Conference Championship race will begin at 10.30 in the morning covering a 5,000 meter trail. The host Stephen F. Austin Lady Jacks have won three previous titles and are hopeful of winning their first since 1990. McNeese State's Sidawaru hopes to make it five years in a row for a cowgirl to take home first place from the conference championship. Waru, a senior, is the two-time defending champion in the women's competition. Going into the final three weeks of play, all seven teams are still vying for a berth in the Southland Conference Soccer Tournament to be played at Northwestern State University November 2nd and 4th. The winner earns an automatic bid into the NCAA Tournament. The Northwestern State Demons were the Southland's first ever automatic bid team after winning the regular season and tournament title in 2000. Defending the championship has been difficult with in-state rivals Louisiana Monroe and a host of other schools playing solid soccer. The Lady Indians were the top team in the conference early in the season before suffering two conference losses. The second of those defeats came against Southwest Texas State. The win for the Bobcats moved them into first place in the standings. A rematch is scheduled for Sunday in Monroe between the first and second place clubs. With more than a month left before the Southland Conference Volleyball Tournament at Lamar University in Beaumont, Texas, the league picture is fuzzy. the Southland Conference frontrunner for the entire season after an 8-0 start in league play and dropping only two games. Nipping at the Cardinals heel are McNeese State, the University of Texas San Antonio, and Southeastern Louisiana University. Lamar advanced to the conference tournament finals last season and returned six starters from that team. The Cardinals were also the preseason favorite to win the conference title.
defending champion UTSA began its Southland Conference campaign with a loss at Stephen F. Boston before stringing together five straight victories heading into this week. The top six teams in the final regular season standings will advance to the Southland Tournament. The winner will represent the conference at the NCAA Tournament. For more information about the Southland Conference Championships, visit www.southland.org. It's the cool, crisp feel of an autumn afternoon. The smell of burgers sizzling on tailgates. The brassy sounds of a marching band. And the roar of a mighty throng of fans. This is football in the Southland. A grand tradition of gridiron greatness. Where raw recruits make their bids to rise above the deeds of yesterday's heroes. It's here that legends are born and stories unfold. Of triumphant victories and despairing defeats. This is the Southland Football League, where helmet meets helmet, pad meets pad, and with a lot of sweat and a little luck, a pigskin makes it into the promised land. This is no dance contest. This is butt-kicking, bulldog, smash-mouth football in the finest tradition of the game. There is no better way to spend a Saturday afternoon. It's Southland Football for crying out loud. Now get up, get out there, and live it! Sportsmanship is about building character. It transcends whatever happens on the field. It's a handshake. Pat on the back. It's about being humble, both in victory and in defeat. NCAA football. Pass it on. Bill Navar and Chevrolet Motor Division have breaking news. Never before in our 20-year history has Chevrolet had an offer like this. 0% financing on every Chevy car for 60 months. Yes, 0% on Impala, Malibu, Cavalier, and Corvette. Save over $5,000 in interest on a $20,000 loan and get a $90 lower monthly payment. Plus 0% financing on every truck, Silverado, Tahoe, S10, all models. 0% interest on all Chevy cars and trucks. It's October 31st. Shop now at Bill Navar Chevrolet in Lake Charles or Sulphur. Since 1963, some of them have gone on to hold public office or to play professional sports. Some have become heads of major corporations. Still others have made the news, while others reported it. Some have gone on to protect our country, while others were destined to entertain. And though they've taken different roads, they all got their start in the same place. The universities of the Southland Conference. Places to go to become what you want to be. McNeese State in the battle of the top 25 teams on top right now by a count of 7-3. to three. They waited until 50 seconds left in the first half to score, but when they did, they made it count and they lead Southwest Texas here at halftime. We'll be back upstairs on a gorgeous afternoon here in San Marcos, Texas. The man responsible for the weather today, Greg Sankey, is responsible for everything at these games. The commissioner of the Southland Conference appreciates you stopping by. Got to be happy with the way things are going right now. You got six teams for the first time ever in one week in the top 25. Yeah, you know, this is kind of a cyclical thing in 1AA. You'll be good a couple of years and maybe not so good the next few years. And we're obviously on an uptick. We think we're the friendliest conference in the South, but not when we play football against some non-conference foes. Yeah, you talk about the non-conference and you gauge yourself about what you do against 1A programs and so far, very good. Well, we, we gauge ourselves in a lot of ways, but obviously obviously one of the ways is what we do against the, the conferences and the schools to give more scholarships, have more coaches at the 1A level and Northwestern States win at TCU. Uh, Sam Houston open up at Louisiana Monroe uh, with a victory in, the, in Jacksonville State at Arkansas State. And uh, over the couple, last couple of years, we've had, I think, eight wins. And we started to do that with regularity and establish an expectation that we are successful against one double A teams, but that we can play up and have some success too. And what's interesting is we play with the same eligibility rules, the same types of financial aid limits, just fewer scholarships and fewer coaches. And we've proven we can compete on the field with some 1A programs. And you take a look at that record right there, 19 and 8 against other conferences here in 2001. That's from the 
football perspective, that's got to make you very proud. Well, I'd like to be 10 and 8 against 1A programs, but uh, we got the nice weather. We have the nice record against 1AA foes, and, and obviously even against 1A. And I'm proud of our coaches. Uh, we've got seven great coaches, uh, some guys with outstanding experience, diverse backgrounds. They approach the game in different ways. Uh, our administrative support's been stronger, and I think it shows in the products that have been put on the field. It's got to be good, too, to get the respect that you're getting right now as a conference. Because sometimes when you can have so many teams that are so equal and there is so much parity, albeit good parity, that can hurt you in the national rankings. Well, the challenge to our coaches at the beginning of the year is to have success in their non-conference schedule. And the, the witness to the fact that we've done that is that we have six of our programs ranked in the top 25 of 1AA. Uh, the challenge now is not to beat each other up. And I'll tell you, I've seen Nichols play, and they're the one team not ranked. And Daryl's continuing to develop Daryl Day, the head coach is continuing to develop that program. So the concern is when we start to select 16 teams for the playoffs that uh, the records won't be maybe as gaudy as we'd like so that you're getting top four or top two seeds. But our expectation, is, uh, as always, is to have multiple teams in that playoff system. Yeah, you talk about Daryl Day. You just know he's the kind of guy that's going to get things done here in the not-too-distant future. Got a big one coming up on Thursday night here on Fox Sportsnet at 6.30. And for those who don't know about this, this is quite a rivalry when Stephen F. Austin and Sam Houston State get together and it goes a long way back it's really a rich rivalry it is it's uh, the battle for East Texas there's a lot of pine trees out there some really good football programs and I think those programs work well together 364 days a year but Thursday night there's a desire for both to win I don't know that I'd say there's hate present but there's certainly some dislike and their teams are playing well Stephen F's won a couple of games in a row Sam Houston is uh, off to a four and one start uh, as a great quarterback and a great defense Stephen F has a returning quarterback back a lot of returning on their defensive side they played well scored three defensive touchdowns last week so uh, plan your Thursday evening to spend some time in front of Fox Sports Net and join us for that game it'll be fun. You know you talk about these teams and one that has been down over the years but seems like it's bouncing back very nice what a job Jack Crow's doing with Jacksonville State right now leading Stephen F. Austin at last report 10 nothing today. I've seen Jacksonville I saw them early and Jack has done a great job and last year you could see that he brought in kind of a fresh perspective uh, uh, they generated a great deal of national attention with Ashley Martin, the first female to score points in a Division I football game. But their offense is really, really uh, outstanding. They have uh, shown the ability to compete with a 1A program in their Arkansas State win. And they put some points on the board. And uh, I think when you start the preseason, you look at the rankings, and they may have been a little bit lower. But again, the, the six teams ranked, and, and Nickel State, and all of them are going to have uh, trouble contending with each other through the season. All right, Greg, thanks for your time. We'll see you Thursday night in Huntsville. Thanks. Have a good four days off. All right, okay. That's Greg Sankey, the commissioner of the Southland Conference. Right now, Southland Football, Football League putting on a good show as McNeese State leads it 7-3. to three. We're back with more from San Marcos in just a moment. Between the Silicon Hills of Austin and the service industries of San Antonio, Southwest Texas State University is in a prime spot in San Marcos to tap into the fastest growing high-tech market in the South. From X-ray analysis to semiconductor manufacturing engineering, SWT is taking a leading edge in the technology fields. SWT graduates some of the most trained and qualified professionals on the brink of the high-tech market. Southwest Texas, a university for leading high-tech specialists. And now, here's a little ditty called a San Marcos Shuffle. <laughs> it's a Texas natural. Five low, low road, anyway, you gotta go 35, 46, so you hide to get your kicks. A daytime, nighttime, go beat, any time, train, stop, a tiny bop, and all shop, a day, you drop a nose down, touch down, hot as campus all around. Here goes the river, floating glass, bottom, so a boat, stay over, play, on the kiss, another world, the one, one call does it all. Tell you folks, to bring them up, on in the water, spot. It's Texas Natural. It's the 2001 Model Year Closeout Super Sale at Billy Navarre Honda with our lowest prices of the year on Hondas, the best-selling cars in Lake Charles. As we close out the biggest sales year in our history, come say big on the number one selling car in all of Lake Charles, the Honda Accord. Plus, choose from a tremendous selection of CRVs, Accords, and the amazing new Civic, the only car in its class ever to receive a five-star safety rating in every category. So come say big during the 2001 Model Year Closeout Super Sale at Billy Navarre Honda I-210 in Lake Charles. 
Franklin and Varn Chevrolet Motor Division have breaking news. Never before in their 20-year history has Chevrolet had an offer like this. 0% financing on every Chevy car for 60 months. Yes, 0% on Impala, Malibu, Cavalier, and Corvette. Save over $5,000 in interest on a $20,000 loan and get a $90 lower monthly payment. Plus 0% financing on every truck, Silverado, Tahoe, S10, all models. 0% interest on all Chevy cars and trucks. It's October 31st. Shop now at Billy LaVar Chevrolet in Lake Charles R. Sulphur. Now, getting your talk on is easier than ever before. All Star Communications, your Sprint PCS Select retailer, makes talk cheap. Right now, you can receive 3,000 minutes for $49.99 per month. That's right, 3,000 minutes, only $49.99 per month. That includes free nationwide long distance. And right now at All Star Communications, everyone can qualify. So get your talk on with 3,000 minutes, only $49.99 at All Star Communications. On the corner of Opelousas and Prater Streets, right here in Lake Charles. Hit me. Hit me. You're watching Fox Sports Net. 7-3, McNeese State on top. B.J. Sam's a 38-yard touchdown reception with 50 seconds left in the first half. And that is your count, 7-3. Kevin Eschenfelder alongside Gary Reasons back with you here in San Marcos, Texas. Pretty good first half so far, one that we expected the defenses would dominate. Well, definitely a defensive struggle. Those two defenses have played very well out there. Really the one big play in the game. Otherwise, it's been field position throughout the whole first half. Well, it's been a busy afternoon in the Southland Football League. Let's take a look at some of the games going on elsewhere around the country and Jacksonville State taking on number 23 Stephen F. Austin as Jacksonville looking to go 5-0 but more importantly 2-0 in conference play and in Nacogdoches right now early on in the second quarter Jacksonville State Gamecocks leading the Lumberjacks by a count of 10-7. Jack Rowe getting things done particularly on the offensive side with Jacksonville State They're a very potent offense and right now the 21st ranked Gamecocks leading Stephen F. Austin on the road. Sam Houston State will be taking on Nickel State a little bit later on. That one will be a 3.30 start. A reminder, you'll see the Bearcats of Sam Houston. And they hope to be 5-1 and one at that point, 2-0 and oh against the league as they take on Nickel State down in Thibodeau. It's a tough place to travel to and a tough place to play. Nickel State and Sam Houston State will get kicked off in just about 15 minutes down in Thibodeau, Louisiana. And Northwestern State goes outside the conference this week they go to North Carolina take on Elon that's at 1 p.m. in Elon North Carolina the first ever meeting between these two teams as Northwestern State looks for its fourth win of the season pretty much what we expected today on a gorgeous afternoon here in San Marcos McNeese State got the plays that they needed where they went the play that they needed when they needed it and got the big touchdown at the end of the first half well we've got two top 25 teams here today Kevin good defense is playing very well out there and as we saw with all the, the, the highlights there and actually the games coming up here in the South and Football League six teams are ranked in the top 25 in this conference I'll tell you, you may see a lot of games that are low scoring games like this the defense is playing so well I'll tell you, any any one big play in a football game could be the could be the answer. Yeah, coach is keeping it close to the vest because they're also very important, particularly for McNeese State, since they're already starting in an 0-1 hole after losing last week to SFA. Time for a break. We'll be back with more from San Marcos, where the Cowboys lead the Bobcats 7-3. What are you doing today? Learn to earn at McNeese State University in Lake Charles, Louisiana. McNeese is the university of choice for almost 8,000 students. The university offers more than 80 degrees in business, education, engineering, liberal arts, nursing, and science. And McNeese has been ranked among the best schools in the nation in providing individual attention to its students. For more information about McNeese State University, go online at mcneese.edu. Excellence with a personal touch. It's what you should expect. McNeese is a member of the University of Louisiana system. There is a start, there is a finish, and in the journey between, there are dreams. The NCAA Hall of Champions keeps these dreams alive for you. More than a museum, the NCAA Hall of Champions takes you on an interactive journey. Relive some of the most inspirational moments in collegiate sports history and walk in the steps of a student athlete. At the NCAA Hall of Champions, you'll find something for every fan. Discover what it means to be a champion. The journey begins inside. I'm Philip Tarver for Lake Charles Toyota, where we have great products at great prices backed by great people. Our great products include a great lineup of SUVs, from the full-size Sequoia to the popular new Highlander to the rugged 4Runner. Our great prices include full-size Tundra, two-wheel drive V8 four-door automatic, just $22,900, and we have 0% APR available. Our great people include NADA certified Toyota trained professionals who can assist you in making the best purchase decision for your wants, needs, and budget. Great products, great prices, and great people at Lake Charles Toyota, Highway 14, south of I. 
Society. We're keeping America on the move at Hopkins Toyota's America's Best Sale. Get America's Best Seller Toyota Camry and America's Safest Full-Size Truck Toyota Tundra. Your choice. Zero down, zero interest, and zero payments till next year. And both Camry and Tundra are built right here in the USA. Plus, register to win a free car. Come by America's Best at America's Best Toyota Sale. Hopkins knows price sells cars. Hopkins Toyota I-20 in Vicksburg. Lake Charles Toyota, where we have great products at great prices backed by great people. Our great products include a great lineup of SUVs, from the full-size Sequoia to the popular new Highlander to the rugged 4Runner. Our great prices include full-size Tundra, two-wheel drive V8, four-door automatic, just $22,900. And we have 0% APR available. Our great people include NADA certified Toyota trained professionals who can assist you in making the best purchase decision for your wants, needs, and budget. Great products, great prices, and great people at Lake Charles Toyota, Highway 14, south of I-210. We're good to go here in San Marcos. This is the second half of the Southwest Texas Bobcats won the toss. They deferred, and they'll take the football here in the second half, and they will work against the wind here in the third quarter. First half that, the dominate, uh, that was dominated by the defense as Charlie Bear gets set to kick it off. 7-3 the score. Well, that tells you, McNeese, they decided they could have taken the win uh, in the fourth quarter. A lot of coaches would do that, but they want to put their defense out there and make them stop the Bobcats deep in their own territory and set the tone when they're out there on the field, Kevin. Bronson Sanders not going to get a shot at this one. Kicks it out of the back of the end zone, two yards. Let's take a look at our Delta Airlines first half statistics. Oh, well, this is a good reason why the top two defenses is what you're looking at here. Because you take a look at those numbers, they're not that impressive on the offensive side. Well, not a whole lot of production, 158 yards and 99 yards, but the one big play in the ball game, the 38-yard touchdown play. Other than that, there's not a whole lot going on in this football game. The first downs have been minimal. The defenses have played very well. Two teams have combined to go two of 16 on third down conversions. Non-conversions as it were. And here we go, second half. Cody McCauley rolls out the freshman being chased. And he'll go down. He had a whole lot of trouble out there. Brad Archie finished him off, but it was Ryan Garrison who is none the worse for wear after having a nasty looking injury in the first half, but Garrison good to go. He was the first man to get there. And a couple of things for the McNeese State, State defense. Devin Stubblefield, their defensive tackle, is going to be out of the football game. He was injured in the first half. He's not going to return. You see how that plays out because he and well, they, were, they were dropping like flies for a little while there from McNeese State. It was good to see he and Joe Judge. And Joe Judge along with Ryan Garrison back in this ball game. Now ah, timeout. Cody McCauley didn't like what he saw. Didn't have anyone in the backfield. And McCauley will call a timeout. He's facing a second down and 12 on the opening drive of the second half. We're back with more. McNeese leads at 7-3. NFL this morning. When that guy gets rolling, <laughs> nothing stops him. He doesn't stop himself. Who cares? NFL this morning on Fox Sports Net. Just an original work boots. From the barnyard to the backyard. From snow and sleet to busy streets. From the factory floor to the dance floor. No other boot works harder to keep you comfortable. Just an original work boots. Double comfort work boots that work. in the middle down there. Okay, we'll get on it. John Andretti appreciates the surgical precision of the technicians who keep his car running on the track and on the street. And he knows that the pros who work on family cars demand quality auto parts from CarQuest. How is everything, John? The car's great, but my back hurts. So now what, I'm your doctor? CarQuest Auto Parts, the professional choice. You know what being a man is all about? It's not about being tough. It's not about guns. It's not about kicking butt. It's about being a good son. It's about being a good father. It's about taking care of your family. It's about being respected for who you are and not who you can beat up. 
Okay, back second down and 12 coming up for Southwest Texas. They trail at seven to three. You see what they've done here in 2001, racking up that four and one record. Their only loss coming at Columbia when they lost 40 to six to the Mizzou Tigers, but wins over Arkansas, Monticello, Angelo State, Illinois State, and Portland State here last week and winning it on a last minute field goal. And Portland State actually had a chance to win that ball game. Got a pass knocked away in the end zone as time expired. And Southwest Texas came away with a big win against another ranked opponent. Here's Bronson Sanders, penalty marker down. Maybe a big reason why there was such a big hold. But big kid McCoy, 365 pound freshman out of Colleen Ellison High School, and he called for a hold here. Now just a draw play inside, trying to create some space for Bronson Sanders. Second down. Gas Camp, our referee today. That's a big penalty there. So we'll back it up inside the 10 yard line, back to the nine. That is a second down and 20. Southwest Texas working against the win, and much like McNeese in the first half, terrible field position. McCauley, quarterback draw again. I'll tell you what. I don't know what the numbers are going to be on Brad Archie, but he is going to have a ton of tackles today. He's been all over the place. Yeah, he is one of those good linebackers for the Cowboys and steps up, does a nice job inside. Very instinctive, good reader of the, the offense, does a nice job. Doesn't make mistakes in his steps. What I mean by that is he doesn't get himself out of position. Watch number 40 here step up into the play. He's patient enough. He finds the ball carry. He doesn't waste his motion. And steps up and makes a good, clean tackle. Now a huge third down and 18 after the two-yard gain. Archie, senior out of Slide L, and fumble returned 55 yards against Texas A&M for a touchdown. And you see, on third down, well, it's just about been a third down and 10 just about every time for these two teams. Now it's going to be punt time for Southwest Texas. Over nine yards, the average for both of these teams needed on third down plays today. The big reason why they have combined to go two for 17 through the first half and minute and a half of the second half. Kevin, this is what Tommy Tate wanted to have happen. He wanted his defense to come out here and make a stop into the negative side of the field for for the Bobcats and make them punt backed up, and they're doing so. And Pierce fields it at the 49. And Lost the football, maybe. It's going to be McNeese ball, but it's going to be right at the 49-yard line. Aaron Pierce fortunate to hold on to that one, and now McNeese has the field position and the wind at its back. We'll be back with more in a moment. Building of our Chevrolet Motor Division have breaking news. Never before in our 20-year history has Chevrolet had an offer like this. 0% financing on every Chevy car for 60 months. Yes, 0% on Impala, Malibu, Cavalier, and Corvette. Save over $5,000 in interest on a $20,000 loan and get a $90 lower monthly payment. Plus 0% financing on every truck, Silverado, Tahoe, S10, all models. 0% interest on all Chevy cars and trucks. It's October 31st. Shop now at Building of our Chevrolet in Lake Charles or Sulphur. Building of our Chevrolet Motor Division have breaking news. Never before in our 20-year history has Chevrolet had an offer like this. 0% financing on every Chevy car for 60 months. Yes, 0% on Impala, Malibu, Cavalier, and Corvette. Save over $5,000 in interest on a $20,000 loan and get a $90 lower monthly payment. Plus 0% financing on every truck, Silverado, Tahoe, S10, all models. 0% interest on all Chevy cars and trucks. It's October 31st. Shop now at Building of our Chevrolet in Lake Charles or Sulphur. We're keeping America on the move at Hopkins Toyota's America's Best Sale. Get America's Best Seller Toyota Camry and America's safest full-size truck Toyota Tundra. Your choice. Zero down, zero interest, and zero payments till next year. And both Camry and Tundra are built right here in the USA. Plus, register to win a free car. Come by America's Best at America's Best Toyota Sale. Hopkins knows price sells cars. Hopkins Toyota, I-20 in Vicksburg. McNeese stayed on top 7-3, to three, and now they've got the field position to work with. Coming up after the game, Southwest Football Saturday, John Radigan, Keith Leibowitz, and 
Former Texas Tech head coach Spike Dykes. They get you caught up on the day's action in college football in the Southwest region. That's Southwest football Saturday. Coming up immediately following this one. Pitch back to Pierce in Southwest Texas defense doing a nice job. He stutter steps for a game of a couple. Clinton Ballard. Heard his name quite a bit today. The big senior out of San Antonio Taft. Had a big game a week ago and putting together another one today. It's been tough sledding for Aaron Pierce today. Well, he's had one big run, Kevin. You remember back, backed right. up at his own five, six yard line, broke it out of there for about almost 40 yards. And, and he's only got 48 today total. So that's that exactly right. Give, give him a little crease though, but I think he's got enough, enough ability to make some plays. McNeese from the eye. Play action. Roll the pocket. Break it down. Break it down. Late near a first down. Great job by Jeff Hamilton. Just his ninth reception of the season. But found the pylon or found the first down marker. Put his foot over it. And it should be enough for a first down as Sterling Rogers pushed him out of bounds. It's just a play action pass. And he's going to come find his tight end. He's going to work to the sideline. Does a nice job of finding him. And watch the footwork of Hamilton. The tight end. They want to get him, him into the ball game as far as receiving the ball. Watch his footwork there. Good job around the, the marker for the first down. Junior from Westlake, Louisiana. Lead option, Pierce, left side, got a seam. Cut it back and mark him off at a gain of 12 yards down to the 25-yard line. That's what I was talking about, just give him a crease, and I think he's got enough ability to make a decent play, and he does here for the offense, for the Cowboys. Little down the line option, and the quarterback decides to pitch. He pitches it quick, and watch Pierce get inside of his blocks. Does a nice job of cutting, and watch them make him make somebody miss in the open field. A little juke there, and goes inside and gets him five more yards. Averages nearly six yards a game. He came on last year. Jesse Burton, one of their all-time leading rushers, went down with a knee injury. Pierce trying to break this one outside, won't do it. And talk about making your presence felt in a hurry. He came in, started the last five games, and had a 100 yards in each of those last five games. So he really came on the scene in a hurry. They thought they were in big trouble when Jesse Burton went down, but Aaron Pierce stepped up big, and he's doing it again today. He's right on his average. Well, McNeese, Kevin, they're perennially, they want to be a running football team. That offensive line is a good size. They're not huge, but they are a good size offensive line. And, and over the course of the game, they can lean on that defense and take its toll. And throw this one downfield. Touchdown, McNeese. Brent Broadhead, his second touchdown reception of the season, and he beat Brandon Dickinson. Now that was a very accurate throw that time by Scott Pendarvis, the quarterback, the young freshman steps up. Little play action pass and throws it right on the money to his receiver. Little play action, you'll see it. He's going to reverse out the play fake inside, hold the linebackers. This is what allows the defense to get a little bit of separation, and he does a good job of finding him into the open area, and it is an excellent throw. I put it right where he needed to be, and now the extra point for a 14-3 lead. He is up and good. Well, the freshman Scott Pendarvis bringing his A game right now. He's completed seven of his last eight passes. This for 22 yards and a score. McNeese State on top, 14-3. It's the cool, crisp feel of an autumn afternoon. The smell of burgers sizzling on tailgates. The brassy sounds of a marching band. And the roar of a mighty throng of fans. This is football in the Southland. A grand tradition of gridiron greatness. Where raw recruits make their bids to rise above the deeds of yesterday's heroes. It's here that legends are born and stories unfold. Of triumphant victories and despairing defeats. This is the Southland Football League, where helmet meets helmet, pad meets pad, and with a lot of sweat and a little luck, a big skin makes it into the promised land. This is no dance contest. This is butt-kicking, bulldog, smash-mouth football in the finest tradition of the game. There is no better way to spend a Saturday afternoon. It's Southland Football for crying out loud. Now get up, get out there, and live it! Just an original work boots. From the barnyard to the backyard. From snow and sleet to busy streets. From the factory floor to the dance floor. No other boot works harder to keep you comfortable. 
Just an original work boots. Double comfort work boots that work. McNeese State comes back on top, 14 to three. Hey, good execution by the offense here. You're gonna see a cat, the guy's gonna come in on the, on the zone blitz. He's gonna have coverage over the top and he's not gonna be able to cover him from off. It's man coverage, you'll see it here as he runs and you watch the separation that he gets and goes to the end zone. The quarterback, Scott Pendarvis, hits Broadhead very well as he beats Brandon Dickinson, number 31. That's tough coverage for the safety playing 15 yards deep to have man coverage. Wide receiver's got a little bit more of a head, a lot more of a head of steam going. You see a five play scoring drive. Tell you what, Ben Darvis has really started to get on track right now as that drive goes five plays, 49 yards, 97 seconds to complete. Well, Tommy Tate is happy because when he went into the ha at halftime, he told his team, we have a plan coming out. I'm going to put my defense out there on the field first. We're going to shut them down and we're going to take the ball on offense and go down and be productive and score. That's exactly what happened. So I think what he told at halftime is somewhat working, Kevin. A Bear should kick this one out of the back of the end zone. And he only sent it nine yards deep, but it does roll out of the back of the end zone. So from the 20-yard line, Southwest Texas tries to get its offense on track. Well, at the end of the first half, we saw the big play, the pass play for McNeese. They get the touchdown. The, the momentum kind of swung their way, and they picked up on it in the second half here, starting out early. First on defense, stopping the, the Bobcats on their first series, backing them up in their, in their area, and then taking the ball on offense and moving it down the field and being productive with the touchdown. A four wide receiver set. No running back. A lot of white jerseys looking eager. There's Lee Davis around in. Has five, has seven. That play's worked. They've only run it a couple of times. One was on a holding call, but it's worked when they've run it. Well, it's kind of like a reverse, but really it's nothing more than having the back in the backfield. and Just giving him a head of steam to get the ball when he picks it up. You see him run here. He's just got a full head of steam running, so he's able to get the corner very quickly, which allows him to get around there, and the line does a nice job of just holding on to your blocks enough to let him get around the corner. Second down and three after the gain of seven yards. Nice scoring on its last two possessions. They lead it 14 to three. Cody McCauley complete. Tyson Oliver, he has the first down to the 36 yard line. Paid the price for that yardage as Hadley Prince came up with a big hit. Tyson Olivo is the go-to guy for the Bobcats, and watch him here. He's just going to take an inside release and get a run away from the defender. Quarterback delivers it well, and Olivo is one of those tough receivers. He's not just going to slide. He's going to pop the defensive back if they're trying to make a tackle on him. Southwest Texas getting something going here in the second half. First time, they get after the 36-yard line where they face first down and 10 in the third quarter. Pitch it back and Lee Davis caught in the backfield by Joe Judge back to the 25-yard line. You, you know, you don't have to look very far to see why this McNeese State defense is so very good. And I think that may be where it starts with 37 right there. So Joe Judge just upfield speed. I tell you, when you get around the corner, he just beats the offensive tackle. Joe Judge goes and gets rid of him, makes the play in the backfield for a five or six yard loss. That's tremendous play from the outside linebacker. Market off at a loss of six, so second down and 16. Joe Judge, Southland Football League Defensive Player of the Week for his efforts against Texas A&M when the New State led 16 to nothing in that ball game. A three-year starter, senior out of Kaplan, Louisiana. Straight drop and throw for McCauley. Had time, but no one open, and he will go down. Jim Abram, the defensive end, and it looked that time maybe that Cody McCauley got as much protection as he has this afternoon, but couldn't find an open receiver. Well, Jim Abram was just persistent on this play, Kevin. When he came around the corner, he almost missed McCauley the first time on getting around there, back to him, getting back to him, but he just hung on and made the play. Had a couple of good plays today. Get after you from behind the line of scrimmage. That's six from behind the line. They lead the Southland Football League with 19 team sacks. Number one against the run, number one overall. Here on a third down and long, on the option. Cut it up. Hello, Brad Archie. He's been huge all afternoon. Form tackle. <laughs> 
Linebackers like that, when you have a chance to scrape and just form up on a guy, that's what you practice all the time. And rarely do you ever have a chance to do that. But watch number 40 just sliding out here to the outside. He's just going to wait and pace and pace till the quarterback shows up. And just go ahead and meet him right there in the whole square up and just de-cleat him. What you do is you pick him up, and the back first thing he hits is his backside. Marvin McCurry with a good punt. I will still put a vote in for Marvin McCurry as the player of the game for Southwest Texas right now. That's not a good thing when it's your punter, but he kept McNeese State pinned the entire first half. Well, it's good to have a weapon as a punter, one that's a good one who can punt the ball into a stiff wind and also gain you some good field position when you have that wind advantage. And he's done a pretty good job for the Bobcats today. As a 38-yarder, he has had four punts that have been down inside the 15-yard line. With the advantage Southwest Texas had with field position in the first half, a lesser defense could very well have been down 21 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. This one right back up the middle. Here's the McCary. Scott Pendarvis, the freshman, they don't ask much more than anything to take care of the football, and Pendarvis has done that and more. He's seven for his last eight for 127 yards and two touchdowns. Not bad. Check out what he did in his first seven possessions, just one of five. Just took him a while. Degrees of skids, now the flea flicker. They'll throw it downfield, has a man open. Martin has it and dropped it at the 15-yard line. Kendall Jones was trying to catch up, but Jermaine Martin had a step, and he can fly. Well, when you run the flea flicker, you want to throw it to the, the flea. flea. That's Eric go. Martin doing a good job of getting out there and all on front of him here. You'll see the handoff inside, and he's going to pitch it back to the quarterback, and then your receiver just going to run and try to outrun the defense. And Darvish just kind of unloads it. The ball is there on timing, and he should make this catch. And Jermaine got hit right on the two. You know, it's so much easier from up here. You don't have to worry about deep backs or anything like that. Getting hit. Here comes the rush, and they forced him to get rid of it. Two teams with a get after a quarterback. Pavlek was the first man to get to him. Big 91, the junior out of Fall City, Texas. Well, credit the defense here when Southwest Texas doesn't seem like they're doing very well on defense. Chance to avoid a big play. They did there when Martin dropped it. Now they're going to go ahead and pressure the quarterback, make him throw it away. Good coverage downfield. The big guys come up and make a good play. They're going to call intentional grounding here. Was he not outside the tackles? The bad news about that is it's a loss of down as yep. well. That's that, you know, that may be arguably the toughest penalty offensively that you can have. Grounding, grounding. On the offense, pass the block into not get past line of scrimmage. Fourth, fourth down. Pavolic that time along with Josh Tubbs in there to force him to ground the ball. It's seventh penalty against McNeese State. Nate David Lotter to come in to punt it away. Ends a string of two straight possessions that have resulted in two McNeese State touchdowns. And it is back again. A low pass from center, but got it off. They got a great bounce. Down to the 23-yard line. McNeese State came out of that one smelling like a rose because they did very well and have been in a lot of trouble. You watch him here, he's just going to grab the ball. It's a low snap. He's just trying to field it. Luckily, he gets it and gets it, has a chance to punt it. You see a cat here coming, Bobcat, trying to block it. Just took a poor angle, that is, the, the young man coming from the outside. He needs to come in front of the punter. It's Brandon Dickinson, number 31. I, I think he was coming at the punter, but the snap was over to the left. That's and what happened, Kevin. He was coming to the spot, what they call it, and the punter moved with it. Brandon Dickinson just about a, a step away from making the block. After a great roll of four. 44-yard punt. This not a good afternoon from him. Ironically enough, he gets his best punt off on a bad snap. That's the second time, at least the second time today, that he's had to field the ground ball. Roll the pocket. This one incomplete. Man, the coverage was there. Wow. Arthur Goodley. Right there with Curtis Dominguez as they tried to get it. The young junior. 
I like this Nice defense. They're aggressive. They come after the quarterback. Watch the rotation here of the secondary coming inside. That's that's pretty pretty good job there, picking everybody up when you have motion. Everybody knows who they have. That's good coaching. The guys come and they execute very well. Good job of delivering and on the tackle and knocking the ball loose. What's the key to this defense? Is it getting to the quarterback or is it the fact that their coverage is so good? Because, you know, it's one of those things. It's a catch-22. Your quarterback doesn't have a whole lot of time, and he needs time because receivers need time to get open. But the defense locks in. If they're going to rush, they're going to decide to rush, and they're going to come anyway. doesn't matter what the offense does. There's a hold, and they'll throw it out of bounds. That time, that was just self-preservation, or at least preservation for the quarterback for Ryan Rust, a junior out of San Antonio, Madison. He was out there on an island. He had no choice. Big 78 knows he got caught. And again, you're talking spot fouls here. You want a Come here, Captain. Captain. It's a personal conversation going yeah, out on the those, field. We're how about those sounds of the game? Well, you see here, big 78 here. We'll take a look at what's happening there. You're going to get that jersey. Every time they grab that, uh, you're, going to, you're going to get that. <laughs> Back it up to the 14-yard line. Again, this drive, if, if McNeese State can hold on defensively here, goes back to that 44-yard punt. Okay, back up, David sideline. Lotta with that field in the ground ball and able to step over, avoid the block. Dickinson did very well have blocked that one easily. Over the so even out a bit. Second down and long. Bronson Sanders step away from breaking that one big. Gets out to the 21 yard line. They'll take the positive yard. Well, that's the one thing about this defense. If you can pop a run through there when they're playing man coverage and they're bringing everybody up, you just get through. It's kind of like a short yardage situation. If Bronson Sanders can get his feet up here, he might take this one all the way to the house. He's just got one guy to beat and he's going right through him. It gives you an idea of just how good they are, though, because they do sell out and they haven't been burned, at least not today. Line to make the 34-yard line. Play action fake, shuttle pass. First down and more. Curtis Dominguez, what a great call against a very aggressive defense out to the 45-yard line. Hadley Prince finally making the tackle. I think Curtis Dominguez may have some Velcro on his backside because that ball hit him in the tail. Luckily, he was able to catch it. It's going to be a shovel pass. You're going to see Dominguez come in here, going to do the play fake inside, and you see Pendarva, McCauley, look at him, catch it on his backside. How did you do that? Then he breaks the tackle and makes a great play here running the football. Gain of 22 yards and a first down for Southwest Texas. Man, they were facing a second down and 22 during that series. Uh, right up the middle, Lee Davis, and there was just absolutely nothing there. Big 50, Jerry Evans got there first, I believe. Well, I'll tell you, that, that defense from McNeese, they come through there, and Lee Davis, when he got the football, a little tentative there as far as running the football. Hey, I'm running up into these big, big monsters up here. I need a little help up there, guys. I beg your pardon. That was Bronson Sanders, I believe, that was in there on that play. Well, Bronson yeah, he was. Hey, he's getting a lot of work in there. Between the tackles we talked about earlier, Kevin, 175 pounds or so for Bronson. Not a big guy. So those hits do add up on it. And talking with this uh, this group from Southwest Texas, they're talking about that. I mean, they know they need to give Bronson Sanders a bit of a break because at that 175, he carried 31 times last week. That's got to be pass interference. Man, that was a nice throw from the back judge. All the way from the opposite 30-yard line, he winged that down to the 45-yard line. He threw that flag 25 yards. Now we're rating the officials on their flag tosses. That's pretty good, Kevin. <laughs> That was fun, but you can see here, they're coming across the screen here, and you got Archie, number 40, just on his tail. Gets him before the ball is delivered. Spot foul, automatic first down. That was a good toss, though, by the way. Looked like an outfielder. A pro hopping. Got rid of the flag <laughs> in a hurry. Got a quick release. There is the first down at the 43. 4.16, clock stop here in the third quarter. First down and 10, little lead option right side. McCauley not a whole lot there, goes ahead for a gain of a couple. 
Kyrie Broden made the stop. Kyrie Broden of the temple. Cody McCauley's run the option a few times today here for the Bobcats, and he goes down the line pretty well. He's got good speed for a big quarterback. What is he, 6'3", almost 210 pounds, and able to pitch the ball if need be, but the, they had the pitch covered, and McCauley does a nice job of bringing it inside. He ran the option in, in high school, Kevin, and pretty poised here for Bob DeBest says, hey, let's, let's go ahead and run some things that this young man can for us. And this, they've had that play in the offense for, for a number of years. They just haven't run it as much. Stood a chance. First of all, the pass is right at the line of scrimmage, but Brad Archie was right there. He's my player of the game as far as the is concerned right now. Brad Archie's coming up and hitting people, that's for sure. He's playing his linebacker spot. He's playing downhill. Going to be a little circle route here to Bronson Sanders, number 12, going to come in from the right side of your screen. And watch Brad Archie come downhill and pop him as the ball's delivered. Oh, I did it with great timing as well. He got there right as the football did. Third down and nine. Eleven tackles last week against Stephen F. Austin. Venture to say he's going to have more than 11 today. Austin has an interception this season. They tried the same shuttle pass, but that time, McNeese State, the defense was wise to it. Nothing doing. It's punt time for Southwest Texas. Archie and Abram, the two white jerseys there to mess that play up for Southwest Texas. You talk about they want to do the shovel pass again. They're trying to get Martin come in there. Number two, you see him, but they've taken the angle away. The quarterback, McCauley, can't pitch it through there. So the Cowboys make a big play defensively. McCurry to punt. Well over into the long jump pit. We'll see where they mark this one. Missouri, 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 32-yard line. That's where McNeese State will scrimmage first down and 10 after a 29-yard punt. A pretty stiff breeze for Marvin McCurry. I think very important here with 248. Would you not agree that well, Southwest Texas defense come up with some plays here and get the football back? The positive end of the field, at least, at least in decent field position, because you're going to have the win starting here in the fourth quarter. The thing the defense needs to do is they just need to play consistently like they have. McNeese has moved the ball pretty well in this half, though. Prim up the middle of the 35, carrying tacklers to the 36-yard line, maybe out to the 37. Prim, 5'11", 227 pounds. Averages six and a half per rush. McNeese State has outscored its opponents 40 to 17 this year. Of course, that was most of that damage was done outside the conference. Here in the conference, everybody playing a little more close to the vest, playing some defensive football. They had big wins over Alcorn, which they went 54 to 14. And West Virginia Tech, but they had a 51 on the board, and they gained 51 to 9. They lost at Texas A&M after leading 16 to nothing. They lost at A&M 38 to 24 back in early September. Come in here after a loss to Stephen F. Austin, 26 to 14. Next week, head to Bowling Green, Kentucky, take on Western Kentucky. Tommy Tate's decided to run the ball on the ground here on first and second down. Brings up a third and short. They want to be in difficult situations on third down. Swing it out, first down. Out to the 48-yard line goes Marcus Trahan. Nothing fancy about it, but certainly effective. Gain of 10 yards. Just swing it outside, make a good play, and get some blockers out in front of you, get the first down. The Bobcats looked like they had a chance to make that play check. The uh, the cat linebacker here for Southwest Texas came up and just missed the tackle at or, near, at or behind the line of scrimmage. Get it out to the 49-yard line. Seconds ticking off here in the third quarter. McNeese State scored on its final possession of the first half and on its first possession of the second half. They throw this one complete. 45-yard line and no more there. Darren Ostelet makes the catch. Just his second reception of the season. Junior from Long Beach, Mississippi. And John Check was there 
to check him and knock him down after a gain of six yards, second down and four coming up. Now this is just traditional McNeese State Cowboy football. Right. They run the ball, run the ball, do the play action passing game, which complements the running game very well. And you don't have to throw the big home run ball, but just throw it down to your fullback and get your seven yards on first down. Right up the middle of the fullback and nothing to do it. Luke Lawton, who did not get the start today, Beg your pardon, that's Andrew Robin, 34, not 44, who had that carry. He's a freshman from Port Berry, Louisiana. That's his first carry of the day. Big Clinton Ballard inside is going to take care of him here. Look at him here, swallow him up, and actually stop him for a one-yard loss on the play. A reminder, Thursday night, 6.30 here on Fox Sportsnet, we had to Huntsville, Texas. Sam Houston State plays host to Stephen F. Austin State. Should be a good one. It comes your way. At 6.30 here on Fox Sports Net. Tommy Tate, not happy with that particular turn of events, but he's got to be happy with the way his offense has performed. Once it got rolling and the defense kind of speaks for itself, number one defense in the Southland Football League and number six total in the nation, and they've played like it today. Well, when you play good defense and you play error-free offense, you're going to win football games, and that's what Tommy Tate wants to accomplish with this Cowboy football team. Last week, they didn't feel like they played very well, gave the ball to uh, Stephen F. Austin, some turnovers, and they scored on those turnovers. Uh, those are things that are hard to overcome as a football team, and they just want to get that game out of their memories. So when I talked to them on the phone this week, they said, hey, let's just don't even talk about that game. Let's just move forward. They kind of put that game tape on the shelf pretty quick. Tommy Tate happy with Scott Pindardis, a freshman out of Walker, Louisiana. And he's really turned it on. Totally different quarterback after the final possession of the second half, or during the final possession of the second half, from then on, first half I should say, from then on he has been, boy, in control and throwing his balls with a little bit more confidence. It seems like every one of his passes have had a little more zip on 10 of 17. See what they've done here in 2001, three and two, that Texas A&M, tell you what, folks at College Station were glad to see McNeese head back to Lake Charles, Louisiana. That is a first down, but a penalty marker comes in late. This could be a face mask. Yeah, maybe late on the play, a slight face mask. Yeah, I think R.C. Slocum felt like they were, uh, didn't want any more, didn't want to see any more of the Cowboys after yeah. that. Yeah, that was a close game, yeah. it really was. Even into the third quarter, the Cowboys played very, very well against Texas A&M. Almost, you know, almost shocked yep. and upset the, up there in, in uh, at Texas A&M. And well, then they run off, they put a nickel at least on three straight teams, 56, 54, and 51, and wins over Prairie View, Alcorn, and West Virginia Tech. And then they lost to Stephen F. Austin. Very disappointing loss at home last week. Late hit on the offense. Play results in this first down. We got Mark off 15 yard penalty. Be first and 10 at that point. Not a kind of penalty that'll make a head coach very happy. Well, three quarters are in the books here in San Marcos, Texas. Three down, one to play. Right now, Tommy Tate's ball club leads it 14 to three. Scott Pendarvis and company trying to keep it going as they have the lead. But says Stephen F. Make it Southwest Texas Day wants to come back here. I'm Philip Tarver for Lake Charles Toyota, where we have great products at great prices backed by great people. Our great products include a great lineup of SUVs, from the full-size Sequoia to the popular new Highlander to the rugged 4Runner. Our great prices include full-size Tundra, two-wheel drive V8 four-door automatic, just $22,900, and we have 0% APR available. Our great people include NADA certified Toyota trained professionals who can assist you in making the best purchase decision for your wants, needs, and budget. Great products, great prices, and great people at Lake Charles Toyota, Highway 14 south of I. Sports Clinics. The NCAA fosters the dreams of children in sport and in life. Focusing on the discipline, confidence, and dedication involved in sports, student athletes can apply fundamentals both on and off the field. When it comes to playing with a purpose, just say yes.
Well, I'm a stockbroker. I love the challenge that the job presents. Family comes first for me. Any time I can spend with my kids, that's precious to rock. When I want something different, I go for the Southwest Water Chicken. My wife sort of turned me on to that. I enjoy it. The chicken is crisp, fresh lettuce, tomatoes, extra zingy sauce. It's very, very, very filling. They love Whataburger. They enjoy spending a little extra time with that. Whataburger, just like you like it. tests. The defending champs are poised for a repeat run when they battle Kansas. A Pac-10 heavyweight fights to get back on track. Oregon State faces Arizona. College football Saturday on Fox Sports Net presented by Kyocera tonight. Well, when you were a child, did you ever want to be a head football coach or a referee? You may change your mind. Listen up. Is terrible. Can you believe that? Why didn't he call it before? He's got to wait to see if the ball crossed the line of scrimmage. When he found out, no, then he's going to throw a late flag. All it is is still fourth down. You lose the yard. Jeez. <laughs> Great stuff. I love it. Just trying to get the right answer out there. And I'll tell you, the official did a good job of communicating. You know, nine times out of ten, the times I've ever heard the officials, they always do. They always have don't say a word, and, and when they, they don't say a word, they hmm. usually don't have an answer. <laughs> they're loose saving. They're killing me, Whitey. They're killing me. Some good stuff. You see who's killing who here. Uh, McNeese is taking over with the game. There's 240 yards here so far today. Let's Prim on the right side. He's out to the 50-yard line. This is what McNeese State wants to do to you. They can forget about the win. They just want to get those big guys up front. Play a little bit of a hole for those big running backs, and they'll take you out two and three and four yards at a time. Take huge chunks off the clock. They lead it 14 to three. This is how they have won football games for years. They sure have. They, they just lean on that defense, get the big guys up there, and just run the ball, run the ball, just tire out the defense as much as you can. You just settle for a third and four situation. They lost the football here. Ben Darvis. Out of the credit of the Southwest Texas defense, sometimes when a play goes that awry, you don't know what to do. But they were right there on top of the situation, and it's a big loss for McNeese State. Well, I'm not sure that the snap count was correct, because when I saw him snap the ball, I thought it was a false start. Here, look at the center. The center snaps it early. He's got to throw it or something here. He's just, the cavalry's coming. They're going to get you. David Lotta healing the 21-yard line as he looks to punt it away. In the first quarter, good field position for Southwest Texas State. What they want to change from that first quarter is the productivity they get out of it. They only have three on the board. We're back with more in a moment. And now, here's a little ditty called a San Marcos Shuffle. <laughs> it's a Texas way, you gotta go 35, 46, so you how to get your kicks. A daytime, nighttime, go late, nitty time, train stop, a tiny bop, and all shop, a day drop, a nose down, touchdown, hot campus all around. Gear goes, live a floating glass, bottom, show a boat, say, over, play, on the use of another world, the one, the one call does it all. Tell you both to bring him up, come on in the water, smile. Hey, it's a Texas natural. <laughs> It's the cool, crisp feel of an autumn afternoon. The smell of burgers sizzling on tailgates. The brassy sounds of a marching band. And the roar of a mighty throng of fans. This is football in the Southland. A grand tradition of gridiron greatness. Where raw recruits make their bids to rise above the deeds of yesterday's heroes. It's here that legends are born and stories unfold. Of triumphant victories and despairing defeats. This is the Southland football. League, where helmet meets helmet, pad meets pad, and with a lot of sweat and a little luck, a big skin makes it into the promised land. This is no dance contest. This is butt-kicking, bulldog, smash-mouth football in the finest tradition of the game. There is no better way to spend a Saturday afternoon. It's Southland football for crying out loud. Now get out, get out there, and live it! 
Well, McNeese State leading it here 14 to 3 as Southwest Texas tries to get something going. A reminder coming up on Thursday, 6.30 here on Fox Sports Net. 23rd ranked Stephen F. Austin taking on Sam Houston State in Huntsville. And on Saturday, November 3rd, we're back here in San Marcos for the Demons of Northwestern State, ranked 20th in the country right now. And then on the November 20th, on a Saturday at 11 a.m., Grambling taking on Nickel State in Thibodeau, Louisiana. Cody McCauley, straight drops the throw after the play. Action has a man open and overthrew him. Well, I'll tell you what, that is a tough one to take. Kendall Jones was wide open. Kendall Jones definitely had a step on the defense here. They're taking advantage of the win now. It's now changed for the Bobcats. Quarterback's going to play action pass, set his feet there and throw, and you're going to see Kendall Jones on the left side of your screen coming across. He just slowed down and adjust on that football. He might have had a chance to make uh, that catch if he falls back. And what's interesting, as I've seen him play a play so far at wide receiver, but Kendall Jones, by trade, is a free safety and a pretty good one at that. Well, when you've got speed, you want to put those players on the field, and that's what he's going to do with Kendall Jones at times, is stretch the defense, let him run deep, and get behind him. Throw this one, he's tipped to the line of scrimmage incomplete. Looking for Tyson Oliver the whole way. Tyree Broden, I think, was the man that initiated the pressure. It looked like a whole lot of white jerseys were coming in there. You know, Southwest Texas, Kevin, they like to run the football, actually. They like to spread the defense. They like to run the football and pass in situations when they want to pass. Now they come up with a hard third and ten situation. It's not what the offense is really designed to do, so Bob DeBest was just taking a chance you know, on a first down play. They're trying to get, get everything all at once, and they almost had it. Well, Lee Davis is a setback. Four wide receivers in. Second three wide receivers in there. Tight end set up. They roll the pocket. Here comes the pressure. And to Cody McCauley's credit, he held on to the football because he could have thrown that one out there for anyone to pick off. And you still have 12 and a half minutes left as the clock continues to move. And it's punt time now. And Tommy Tate said, hey, guys, go get them. We're going to find you. You're going to have to beat us on the run. We're going to pressure you time and time again. They're doing a good job. Aaron Pierce back deep in the field. This one for a high punt. Wind's not even going to help this one much. Down at the 41 yard, it still amazes me that as much as you preach it, and as much as everybody knows it, that the receiving players just do not get away. They still don't get away from the football. That one almost hit a McNeese State player, which could have been disastrous as far as McNeese was concerned. Yeah, if it had bounced down, we uh, could have had a whole big change of things here. Take a look at this third down play where Kendall Jones comes into play here. Actually, this is the quarterback and all the duress that he's under, and his receivers are all covered up on top. Nowhere to throw the football, McCauley has to take it on the chin. That's Arthur Goodley with the good coverage there, 30. And it's been pretty much the norm all day long. They run this one up the middle, and Marcus Trahan spinning off a couple. It's out for a nice gain of six yards. He did most of the work on that one. Hefty footwork by Trahan. No, you're not kidding. 46-yard line spot. Justin Dunk made the stop. Trahan again. This time he's not going to get away. Greg Pitts right there to make the stop. Southland's leading tackler. Scott Pendarvis, I think he's had a pretty good day, Kevin. He started, he started out kind of shaky, not too good there, but you take a look at the numbers he's have here in the first half. Pretty good production with a big touchdown at the end of the of the second quarter. In the second half, five of six, very productive in the touchdown as well. At one time he had completed, I believe it was eight of nine. Really changed first half to second. Again, that final possession of the first half looked like he a lot more confident quarterback. Than Looks confident here, but lost the football, and Southwest Texas has it. First turnover of the game, and Southwest Texas has the football. Sterling Rogers knocked it away, and Myron Coleman recovered it. Well, here's Sterling Rogers at the bottom of your screen. He's going to come back on the quarterback here. You think he's going to make a big play, but Rogers watch it, put his right arm on the football, pulls it out. The Bobcats come up with it. Yeah, 
looks like Pendarvis is going to make a fine play here and get a first down for the Cowboys, but a good hit there on the outside, and Holman comes in for the, for the recovery. Cody McCauley throws this one over the middle, and that can almost intercept it. Smith, Arthur Goodley was the one that really threw a bead on that one. Smith had the coverage, but Goodley coming over from the safety spot almost picked that one off. Well, watch the quarterback here. Watch his head movement. He's going to try to pump fake out to the left side, going to try to let the defense bite on it, but they really don't. Good coverage that time by the Cowboys. Two guys bracket on the receiver. See now that the Bobcats are trying to work the middle of the field here on two deep passes here early in the fourth quarter. Close quickly, though, as he gets to the 48-yard line. Brad Archie again. Brad Archie's getting combat paid today. I'll tell you, he's in there, made a lot of plays. And Sanders, he and Archie have matched up here. Watch 40 line in there and just find he's going to find number 12. And bingo, and the helmet comes off for the tailback on the play. Big third down here as they face a third down and six. You'll be your Southland Defensive Player of the Week. Mark it down. It's been awesome. I'm just putting in my vote for the powers to be. Oh, steps up, delivers, complete. Olivo has the first down, and he's out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Arthur Goodley made the stop, but they'll move the chains. A little read out again, Tyson Olivo. He is their go-to guy in their offense. Take a look at the linebacker and getting into the action, but good job that time on McCauley of getting the ball outside. Tyson Olivo on the Olivo on the readout gets the first down for the Bobcats. Get four wide, Sanders the single setback. New State versus those two forty-two have come as of late. They got nothing going early on, and they have taken advantage though since then. Flags down. And McNeese says it's against Southwest Texas. Southwest Texas says it's against McNeese. And it's well, going to go against Southwest Texas. Well, everybody's saying, watch Hadley Prince here, number nine, at the end of that play. We're not going to see it, but pretty good footwork there, just jumping over the quarterback instead of hitting him. We got defense. In a neutral zone. Offside. My George penalty. First wow. I thought Ryan Rust on the left side went a little early. Yeah, take a look at the quarterback action here. He's going to get a little to rest, but watch number nine. I think he's going to pop him, but no, right over the top. Now, I kind of equate this to speed in baseball, what this defense is for McNeese. It's, you know, speed can make pitchers make mistakes. And it's kind of the same with a quarterback. And this, you got to make the defense this, this fast. Really makes everything have to hurry up on the offensive side. A little too fast there, Kevin. Yeah, the <laughs> offensive, but the offensive linemen know they have to have, be especially quick in a drop step. Quarterback knows he's got to be quicker in making his reads and delivering the football. Really does put a lot of pressure on the offensive side. Well, the good thing here is that both teams... Get off sides. On the defense. Five-yard penalty. Result in first down. It's a quick and easy first down for the Bobcats. Two offsides penalties for McNeese here going on. But as I was talking about as far as, you know, these teams can practice against each other's defense. You know, their offenses can. Both defenses play with speed. So that's a good test. It's a way for them to practice and improve. So I think when they get to game situations, it can really help them perform. Straight drop to throw, looking up top. And this one out of bounds. And the tender receiver again was Kendall Jones. He's making his way onto the offensive side of the football. He's trying to go to him deep and outside, but the ball is just a little bit too far out. Kendall Jones got great speed. And they want to get him the football. Looks like he could be a big play receiver for this Bobcat offense at times. That is five for 20 in the passing department for that young man, Cody McCauley. The completions have been few and far between. On the shotgun, second down, 10, here comes the blitz. Judge knocked it away, loose football, and who has it? Well, Southwest Texas got back on it. 
Well, the speed that Joe Judge displayed there off the corner was just tremendous. McCauley never had a chance, never saw him, and Joe Judge almost could have taken the ball from him, but he elected to hit the quarterback, and Cody McCauley, the ball came forward. Watch from the right side of your screen, Judge number 37, just pop him right there, and bingo, the ball is out, strips it, and lucky for the Bobcats that they're able to fall on him. Flip Wilson would be proud. That time it was, here comes the Judge. Knocked it away. Back it up to a third down and 15 from the 35-yard line. And Southwest Texas is going to call a timeout. No timeout on the field. We'll take it with them up top, 14-3. to McNeese State with the lead. Southwest Texas trying to get into this ball game. Eight and a half to go in the game. Since 1963, some of them have gone on to hold public office or to play professional sports. Some have become heads of major corporations. Still others have made the news, while others reported it. Some have gone on to protect our country, while others were destined to entertain. And though they've taken different roads, they all got their start in the same place. The universities of the Southland Conference. Places to go to become what you want to be. Stars number one in new hit movies. Stars number one in new hit movies. Movies you'll see first on Stars and only on Stars. Pelican Pawn and Jewelry is one of the Lake Area's newest Sprint PCS Select retailers. So now we can offer you these great deals on Sprint PCS services. 1,200 minutes a month, only $34.99. That includes free nationwide long distance. For the latest in digital communications, try our Total Digital Connect. This plan offers 2,500 minutes a month, only $59.99. Toll free long distance, internet access, voice command, and 50 free text messages are also included. So to get totally connected, come to Pelican Pawn and Jewelry, 1704 Highway 14 in Lake Charles. West Texas trying to give them something to cheer about right now. They trail it 14 to 3. They had a field goal on the opening drive of the ball game, a 19-yard field goal, and since then uh, it's been tough going for the offense. Now they face a third down and 4 15 on the afternoon. Uh, it's been third down and big as you see. Only 11 and a half yards to go on average. And this one a third down and 15. Cody McCauley from the gun. Here comes the pressure. He steps up, delivers, and incomplete. J.D. Hill, the ball was there, but so were two defenders, and J.D. Hill couldn't hold on to it. Judge and Hadley Prince both there. Well, two of the best uh, athletes on the defense. We've got Joe Judge, number 37, and number 9, Hadley Prince. Take a look at this here. Man. I wonder why I didn't catch it. Oh, it was, it was behind him. I, <laughs> uh, that's my eyes deceived me on the when I saw it live. <laughs> he became judge and jury on that play. Yeah, an executioner almost. The fourth down. Here we go. The play of the game for Southwest Texas and. Should have been picked off, but it won't matter. Joe Judge couldn't hold on to it at the 20-yard line, but that's probably the best-case scenario for McNeese because they're going to pick up 15 yards. On that turn of events, comes out to the 35-yard line where they're taking football. Well, that's a good way to look at it, Kevin. I know he'd like to have yeah, yeah. the interception. McCauley just trying to find a receiver. Good coverage downfield. I'll tell you, the Cowboys are just swarming around the receivers. They're rushing the quarterback. They went, they're mixing it up. They're not always coming at the quarterback, and they're dropping back as need be. Joe Judge has had one heck of a game on the defensive side of the football, along with well, Brett Archie. the linebackers, Archie, and just a lot of guys over there playing very well for the Cowboys. Aaron Pierce right up the gut, a gain of a couple, more importantly. They're looking at that time and keeping it going right now. 
with eight minutes here. Plenty of time in this ball game for either team to really get something going. I don't think McNeese needs to just play it too close to the vest. They need to move the ball. They need to can't run it every play. They may have to use that play action passing game. It started to work for them here uh, in this second half. And I think they would continue to do that. Well, that is what is deceiving about a game like this when you've got a team like McNeese whose defense is dominated and pretty much done what it wants to do. Still at the end of the day, or at least right now in the day, it's two plays away from Southwest Texas being ahead in this game. They're only down 14 to three. That's going to be a first down, though, and a chance to run more time off the clock is Rick Broadhead, who had the big touchdown catch earlier, makes that reception and goes out of bounds. That's the play action passing game I'm talking about here. You're going to sell the run, sell the run, then do the play action. It's going to allow the receivers to get the separation, and Broadhead does a nice job of working the side. On. Almost a pretty good block there to spring him. Could have been a very big play for the Cowboys. First down and 10 from the 49-yard line now. Reminder Thursday night, Stephen F. Austin and Sam Houston State, 6.30 here on Fox Sports Net, Huntsville, Texas. And there will well be a meeting of a couple of unbeaten teams in the Southland Football League. Now with 7.15 to play. Nice. And square its record one and one after losing to Stephen F. Austin last week. This the conference opener for Southwest Texas. That'll cost him five. Haven't talked a lot about Harvey Dersky inside there, number 95. Senior. I remember him here a few or three or four years ago, Kevin. Played in there undersized, about 230, 35 pounds, and now he's kind of all grown up. He's playing about 265. A lot of change there, and he really anchors that inside of the defensive line for the Bobcats. Well, like you said, it's been a defense ever since Bob DeBest got here, and you can tell how much better, because you and I both have pretty much followed this program in the five seasons he's been here, and how much better, or at least bigger, the athletes are now than they were when he first came here. He just couldn't get the players, didn't have the players. And he sprung this one outside for a big game. But now he's starting to get some of those guys. And really trying to turn things around. Bob the best. He's a lifer here. He spent some time at the University of Minnesota, but played here at Southwest Texas State. A graduate here in San Marcos. Well, he's done, he's built this program the right way. He has recruited well, and he's kept those recruits here, and he's built from within. He hasn't gone out to the junior college ranks to try to bring men in here to play and accent essentially his football team. But uh, he's built from within and they've got a pretty solid program. And McNeese has been doing that for years. They, they've continually had that program built uh, by good recruiting and it's paid dividends. Yes, Scott Pendarvis has come in, the freshman. He came in and replaced Slade, the Slade Nagel. Now the last time that a freshman quarterback came in and replaced a guy in the middle of the season, it was a freshman quarterback by the name of Kerry Joseph, pretty good player for the Seattle Seahawks right now. He went on to have a great career here at Nice State. The man he replaced that day was Eric Atchison, who is now a doctor here in the San Antonio area, here in San Marcos. He's in the military doing his medical internship. So he's gone off to have a pretty successful career himself. Yeah, a couple of good quarterbacks, good stories. You can see the Cowboys here, though. They're, they're just handing the ball to Aaron Pierce and letting him just try to bang through there and get some yardage on first and second down, bring up a third down and short situation. But more importantly for them, the clock is moving. The clock is in their favor, down to almost five minutes in this ball game. Been a slow day in the third down department. Only two of the 11, 34% for the season. Now they'll run wide. Look out. Got the corner. B.J. Sams down to the five-yard line. Did he lose it? Oh, they're going to say he was already down. Tell you what, B.J. Sams has touched the ball twice today. There as he goes off for about a 28-yard run, and the first time was a 38-yard touchdown reception. Well, this is a play that the Bobcats run offensively. They bring wide receivers or they're back across in motion. Just a speed play here watching. There's just a little dose of your own medicine. We run this a lot. You see it in practice. Look at the blocking up here. They've got them all walled inside. And then Sam just gets in behind his big guys and makes a big play. You see the strip from the backside. He is down. 
Myron Coleman, number 54, the linebacker in pursuit. Feels like he strips it out, but uh, the Cowboys are going to have a first down. And now they're going to have a touchdown. McNeese State, Andrew Robin, his first touchdown of his career. He's just a freshman from Port Berry, Louisiana. He takes it in for six. Get the momentum going your way, just pound it inside. You just take the heart right out of the defense when you do that. There's power football. Well, McNeese State held Southwest Texas to three points a year ago. Looking to do it again today. Extra point away from making it a 21 to three ball game. And we are there. Four minutes, 32 seconds to play in San Marcos. 13th ranked McNeese running away with this one. Back with more in a moment. The best damn sports show, period. Sports comedy, commentary, updated scores and highlights. The best damn sports show, period. Weeknights at 7.30 and 11.30. Well, I'm a stockbroker. I love the challenge that the job presents. Family comes first for me. Any time I can spend with my kids, that's precious time. We go to the Waterburger for lunch. It's a family restaurant. When I want something different, I go for the Southwest Water Chicken. My wife sort of turned me on to that. I enjoy it. The chicken is crisp, the fresh lettuce, tomatoes, extra zingy sauce. It's very, very, very filling. They love Waterburger. They enjoy spending a little extra time with Dad. Waterburger, just like you like it. They are among the finest in their specialties. Their patients are referred to them from all over the world. They have a wealth of experience and compassion. And when you need them, they're there. At Diagnostic Clinic of Houston, they have the resources and the technology to find answers to your health concerns. They are an impressive team of specialists to whom you can refer anyone. Diagnostic Clinic of Houston. Refer someone you love. They say kids don't listen, but they do. They listen when you curse. They listen when you make a racial slur. They listen when you yell at them. Is this what you want them to hear? You can make the choice to be a better role model. Talk to your kids. They're listening. <laughs> The Southland Football League, brought to you by Delta. Proud to be the official airline of the Southland Football League. Visit Delta at www.deltaair.com. La Quinta ends with 300 locations nationwide. Call 800-531-5900. And by the Southland Football League. Visit the official website of the Southland Football League at www.southland.org. Well, a gorgeous day in San Marcos, Texas. Andrew Robin will never forget this, his first collegiate touchdown. Took it in from five yards out. You don't get to save the football in the colleges, though, in the college rates. Just get to savor the memories. 432 left. Low liner. The 20 out to the 25 to 26 yard line. Big time hit was delivered there. Hadley Prince, number nine, comes in. I tell you, he's an athlete. Devin Freeman was the one who brought that one back. And for further review, he may have wanted to defer that one to some of the guys a little further back. Got a personal foul. Late hit on the kicking team. The 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. You know, if you're Southwest Texas now, 423 to go. And you know, we say this, take a look one more time at this first thought. I'm not sure where the penalty came in here, but watch Hadley number nine. Just lay the Man. wood to him. I don't know where the late hit is. May have come in some of the, the scrapes afterwards. After this big 15 yards, you're going to get the ball at the 40-yard line. This is, a, this is a guy selling out on the on special teams when he's a starter on the defensive end. Adley Prince. I think that might be the second time we've seen a hit up near the head where they called a, a personal foul. Step up and throw this one incomplete. They're going to get an interference call. Okay, Keith Smith. 
But he nailed here for this one. But Keith Smith and Sean Williams go along with Prince and, and Arthur Goodley. They're a big reason why this defense is so successful and why teams have such a hard time throwing the football. Granted, the pressure is there on each and every play. These corners have been right up on the receivers all day long. The pass interference on the defense. Spot foul, automatic first down. Kevin, you're right. When you can take your cornerbacks and lock them up outside, don't worry about them. Take those guys that they're covering out of the football game. It minimizes the, choice, the choices that the quarterback has to go to. Then you just take your other nine players and you, hey, you go in there and play the run or you go ahead and pressure the quarterback on the end of passing game. Yeah, guys can cover wide. Well, it sure makes you be able to do a lot of other things defensively and take a lot more chances. And this map, this one right up the middle and not a whole lot there. And Bronson Sanders on the drop play. Hadley Prince again from his from the outside. Just coming in to get in the backfield, making a negative play. We talked about Judge. We talked about the linebacker, Brad Archie. Their defense plays very well. And now Hadley Prince, number nine, is making his presence known. Just under four minutes to go here in San Marcos, Texas. East State, 13th ranked team in the nation. They throw this one up top, and this one picked up by Sean White, the senior out of Missouri City, Texas, with his first interception of the season. Now the quarterbacks just want to make a play here. You got one to one, man, one man to man on coverage right here, and Sean White just reading the ball, reading the receiver all the way. Sean Williams, he comes back and makes a good grab. Excellent job there, coverage. That would have been a tough one to get in there for uh, for the quarterback, but uh, it's an excellent play by the defense. We just talked about the corners, too, and how good of a job they've been doing all day long. Take a look at some scores, or at least listen up for some scores from around the Southland. Jacksonville State right now leading Stephen F. Austin in Nacogdoches 30-17. to And Sam Houston winning on the road right now at Thibodeau. They lead it 14-7. State Elon today in North Carolina, and they have a 24 to 6 win there. So Northwestern State coming away with an out of conference win. Here today, looks like McNeese State's going to square its Southland record at 1 and 1, and Southwest Texas is going to fall to 0 and 1. They lead it 21 to 3 to the Cowboys. Well, winning is nothing new for this Cowboys bunch. I tell you, Kevin, nine of the last 11 years in the Southland Football League, they have advanced into the playoffs of Division I AA. It's been an excellent program over time, and uh, buzz the ball pops out. Got a cause fumble there. White jersey falls on it. Heads up play by James Roden, junior from Groveton, Texas. But year in and year out, this Cowboy program has done a good job of Developing a good speedy defense, very physical. They pride themselves on playing very physical football at McNeese. There was some terrible weather that came through here last night. And now that weather moving east, and I believe I know where it is. It's in Thibodeau, Louisiana right now because that game is being delayed right now. They just had some unbelievable lightning in this area last night. High winds, terrible thunderstorms. It was moving east, and uh, that's about how long it takes to get to Thibodeau, and it's there right now. That game being delayed, but Sam Houston State leading it 14-7. to Looks like they're attending to Myron Coleman, the linebacker, number 54 for Southwest Texas. Well, he, along with Greg Pitts and Clinton Ballard up front, Sterling Rogers, those are some names they'll afford to do without. You got Bob DeBess, their head coach, walking out to check on him. You know this conference, Kevin, you're talking about the matchups and the games, and I'm really excited about this conference and, yeah. and how things have, have unfolded. I mean, we talked about it before. we got two team, uh, excuse me, six teams in the conference right now in the top 25 in Division I AA. Tell you, how powerful is that for the Southland Football League? And I'm sorry, that's that's a hard Durski. Durski, uh, That's not uh, Coleman, as I talked about earlier. Still a big part of that defensive line, and Dursky coming off. He's been around a long time, now a senior. He started a lot of games here at Southwest Texas State. So as we move along in the conference, I'm looking forward to seeing Sam Houston because they're, they're a pretty good outfit. And Stephen F. Austin as well, and we'll see Northwestern down the road. We're on the little end around again. Jermaine Martin, the flea gets outside, man, he's quick. After the 36-yard line, Kendall Jones knocked him out of bounds.
started in the second quarter, late in the second quarter with a big touchdown, and tell you, they've just turned it on here in the second half. Came out of the locker room, had a good defensive stand to start the second half, kicked it deep, then the offense turned around and scored, and it's been their ball game ever since, Kevin. Yeah, that big play to B.J. Sams with 50 seconds remaining. But McNeese stayed up 7-3 to three going into the locker room. And ever since then, like you said, it's it's been all McNeese. It was the one play that they kind of need. looked like they kind of needed to get jump started, and that's all they needed. And right now they've tacked on two more touchdowns since then. They scored on the opening possession here in the second half to go up 14-3, to three, and now they lead it 21-3. to three. A reminder, coming up next, John Radigan, Keith Leibowitz, and former Texas Tech head coach Spike Dykes. They're warming it up and we'll be turning it over to them in just a couple of minutes. Now, why is Spike the only one that gets his name on the ground? That's what I want. <laughs> Here's Aaron Pierce and Pierce dancing ahead across the 40 yard line out to the 41. Spike knows something about college football, I'll tell you that. He's also fun to be around and, and he has a real good sense of humor about the game. Southwest Texas will take a timeout with 66 seconds remaining. 21 to 3. East State coming in here, ranked 13th in the nation. Six teams in the Southland Football League ranked in the top 25 in Division I AA. Talking with Greg Sankey at halftime about what this conference has been able to do, not only outside the conference against 1AA opponents, but also with the big wins against 1A programs. Witness Northwestern State winning at Fort Worth over TCU. Yeah, so the Jacksonville State knocking off Arkansas State earlier this year. So some big wins from inside the conference going outside and taking on 1A opponents. Well, that's huge. That's that's huge. It just tells you the level of competition that's within this conference. Now, the big thing between Division 1A and Division 1AA football, Kevin, really the major difference is, is the scholarship. Right. You have 85 in Division 1A, 1A football and only 63 in 1AA. So the numbers of players that you're able to recruit into your program are less in Division 1AA. Doesn't mean the talent is any less diminished because there are a lot of great players in this division. Big part, big difference, I think, is depth. Not going to throw the flag here. And Southwest Texas will have it at the 24 yard line. Well, now they do throw the flag. So is this going to be a running into the kicker? We'll check it out. And there, see, I told you they threw it. That's where it landed, right on the 30 yard line. Yeah, with McNeese State, keep in mind they had a lead at Kyle Field over Texas A&M, 16 to nothing in that ball game. For South, before Texas A&M came back to win it, 38 to 24. They do run into the kicker, so it's a five-yard penalty. At this point, it'll be just a matter. Yeah, it wouldn't have been a first down anyway. It was fourth down and six. It would have been a five-yard penalty. And with less than a minute left to play, let's go ahead and play out the string here. Bobby Bass is going to send his troops out there, McCauley and company, to... Get something else positive here at the end of this football game. Take something away that you can you can build on. Just a minute or so to go here. You want to know what's happening in the Southwest region in college football? Stay tuned. John Radigan, Rick Renner, Spike Dykes, waiting in studio. This is this is the tale of this football game in the second half. The total yardage McNeese State has just dominated. 34 yards have held Southwest Texas to here in the second half. They're looking for Olive O, and that's incomplete. Well, that's another thing, too, that Cody McCauley is going to learn is the fact that you know, he's just a redshirt freshman and he's going to make redshirt freshman mistakes. But that time, his eyes never left number four from the time that Tyson Olivo left the line of scrimmage. Well, if you're going to pick somebody out, it kind of marks that man and it allows the defense to converge on him. And if Tyson Olivo is a big time receiver for these guys and makes plays for him a lot. He took a pretty good shot that time in the back. And Hopefully he's going to be okay. And five of 24. Well, this one incomplete. Here's Dominguez, one of the receivers out there, along with Devin Freeman. Arthur Goodley had the coverage. Fox stops with 50 seconds remaining. Number nine, Hadley Prince does a nice job of just pressuring here. 
Coming in on the quarterback from the left side. Just watch him. He's just going to attack and bingo jump in front of him. Just a little love tap. Third down at 10. This one almost knocked, uh, almost picked off by Hadley Prince. But yeah, that might have hurt the quarterback. Yeah. He took a shot there. Yes, Kevin. he did. Cody McCauley did take a shot. He's up. He's tough. They have punted away one more time. McNeese will take a knee and they'll get away with their fourth win of the season. Oh, tell you what, Gerald Zeno could have made, uh, I think he could have done a lot more damage than he did right there. Well, there's going to be a little, little work done on this offensive blitz protection and actually coverage. Blocking assignments and passing game. Well, that was a great punt. Well, you're not kidding. That's going to help the average immensely all the way down to the 10 yard Well, he's line. had a good game. He really has. Yeah, Why not add something to the, to the puzzle there? That is a 67 yard punt. And he has again been the player of the game on his 11th punt of the day. Not a bad day at the office for Marvin McCurry. He kept McNeese State pinned the entire first half. Comes away. That's the coup de gras there. This team's going to come away with a loss. It's six pinned inside the 20. Well, Kevin Scott Pendarvis for the for McNeese State. His first start as quarterback for this football team, replacing Slade Nagel, the senior. I think he's come in here and he's done a good job. He's run this football team. Started kind of slow, but overall he's played a pretty good football game. He'll take a knee here. Tommy Tate's going to take a win here in the Southland Football League. The, the first, they're 1-1 one one now with the loss to Stephen F. Austin, and the Bobcats are going to move to 0-1 in conference play. Won't have to snap it again. So they say a road win is like two at home. Well, Tommy Tate lost one at home last week and gets the win here on the road. Bob DeBess still has yet to coach a team to beat McNeese State. He'll have to wait at least another year for that. A couple of guys with a lot of respect for each other, but Scott Pendarvis, big afternoon for the freshman quarterback. McNeese State comes away with the win, 21 to three, the final score. We'll be back and wrap things up from San Marcos in a moment. How has NCAA football influenced your life? For me, NCAA football is the best. The opportunities are always there. You just have to take advantage of them. It taught me how to develop my mind and achieve my goals. Go the distance. Reach beyond. NCAA football. Pass it on. tests. The defending champs are poised for a repeat run when they battle Kansas. A Pac-10 heavyweight fights to get back on track. Oregon State faces Arizona. College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net, presented by Kiyosara tonight. McNeese Lady get, are winning at 21 to 3. The final score, the number 13 team in the country comes in, gets a big road win. Hey, what? You can hang your hat on the defense, and that's what McNeese did today. I'll tell you, both defenses played well early in the game. I'll tell you, but my, McNeese State, they just played lights out in the second half, only allowing Southwest Texas 34 yards of offense. Great job there, and Tommy Tate's got to be very pleased with his offense pr production in the second half. Young quarterback Scott Pendarvis came in for his first start for that football team and uh, performed admirably, uh, Kevin. So I think that Tommy Tate is very pleased with his football team right now. But once again, our final score from San Marcos, McNeese State wins it 21 to three. Our reminder, our next Southland Football League game, Thursday, Stephen F. Austin takes on Sam Houston State. We'll touch that remote. It's time for Southwest Football Saturday with John Radigan, Rick Renner, and Spike Dykes. So for Gary Reasons and all of us at Fox Sports Net, Kevin Eschenfelder saying so long from San Marcos again. McNeese wins at 21-3. This has been an exclusive presentation of Fox Sports Net and the Southland Conference. <laughs>